Story 1 The night was deep and silent, the kind that wraps around you like a thick, suffocating blanket. I remember the chill seeping through the thin walls of my room, crawling under my skin and settling into my bones. It was the kind of cold that made every movement sluggish, every breath visible in the dim moonlight filtering through the curtains. I had fallen into a restless sleep, tossing and turning beneath the weight of my thoughts. Dreams danced at the edge of my consciousness, twisted and fragmented, slipping through my fingers like water. And then abruptly I jolted awake. At first I couldn't discern what had woken me a creaking floorboard, a distant sound echoing through the night. But as my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I felt it a presence, heavy and oppressive, lingering at the edge of my awareness. My heart hammered in my chest as I scanned the room, searching for any sign of intruders. But there was nothing, just the shadows dancing across the walls, casting eerie shapes in the moonlight. I tried to shake off the feeling, to convince myself that it was just a trick of the mind, a product of my overactive imagination. But then I saw it a figure, standing at the foot of my bed, obscured by darkness. My breath caught in my throat, fear coiling in the pit of my stomach. I blinked, once twice, trying to dispel the image, but it remained, a silent sentinel watching over me. I wanted to scream, to flee from the room and never look back, but my body was frozen, paralyzed by the weight of fear. All I could do was lie there, trapped in my own terror, as the figure loomed over me, its presence suffocating. And then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, it was gone. One moment, the figure stood at the foot of my bed, a silent specter haunting my nightmares. And the next, it vanished into the darkness, leaving nothing but an empty void in its wake. But the coldness remained, clinging to the air like a ghostly reminder of its presence. I wrapped the blankets tighter around me, trying to ward off the chill that seemed to seep into my very bones. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, of being hunted by something unseen and unknowable. I lay there for what felt like hours, trapped in a liminal space between sleep and wakefulness, between reality and nightmare. Every creak of the floorboards, every whisper of the wind outside sent shivers down my spine, as if the world itself was conspiring against me. And then finally the first light of dawn began to filter through the curtains, banishing the darkness and the terrors that lurked within it. With trembling hands I rose from my bed, my limbs heavy with exhaustion and fear. I stumbled out of the room, desperate to escape the memories that haunted me. But even as I fled into the safety of the daylight, I knew that the specter would never truly leave me, that its presence would linger in the shadows waiting for the moment when I least expected it. For some horrors are not so easily banished they dwell within us, lurking in the darkest corners of our minds, waiting for the opportunity to strike when we are at our most vulnerable. And no matter how hard we try to outrun them, they always find a way to catch up to us in the end. The morning sun painted the room in hues of gold, casting long shadows that seemed to stretch and dance across the walls, but even in the light of day, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered in the air, like a foul scent that refuses to dissipate. I forced myself to carry on with my daily routine, to push the events of the night to the back of my mind and focus on the tasks at hand, but with every step I took I felt the weight of the previous night pressing down on me, threatening to consume me whole. I tried to convince myself that it had all been a dream a trick of the mind brought on by exhaustion and stress, but deep down I knew better I had felt the coldness of its gaze, the oppressive weight of its presence bearing down on me like a leaden shroud. As the day wore on, the memory of the figure at the foot of my bed haunted me like a specter, lurking just beyond the edge of my consciousness. I caught myself glancing over my shoulder, half expecting to see its shadow looming behind me, ready to drag me back into the darkness from which it had emerged. But each time I turned, there was nothing, just the empty expanse of the room stretching out before me, 
devoid of any trace of the terror that had plagued me the night before. It was as if the figure had never existed at all, as if I had been hallucinating the entire ordeal. I tried to bury myself in work, to distract myself from the gnawing sense of dread that gnawed at the edges of my sanity, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that the eyes of the unknown were still upon me, waiting and watching from the shadows. Night fell once again, casting the world into darkness and bringing with it a sense of foreboding that hung heavy in the air. I found myself dreading the moment when I would have to return to my bed to face the possibility of encountering the figure once more. Story 2 The scratching noises began as a subtle disturbance, barely audible above the gentle hum of the night. At first I brushed it off as nothing more than the scurrying of rodents, a common occurrence in old houses like mine. But as the night wore on, the sound grew louder, more insistent, until it seemed to fill the room with its ceaseless rhythm. I tried to ignore it, burying my head beneath the pillow in a futile attempt to drown out the noise. But no matter how hard I tried to block it out, the scratching persisted, like a persistent echo reverberating through the walls. As I lay there, tossing and turning in the darkness, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something unnatural about the noise, something sinister lurking just beyond the edge of my perception. It was as if the very walls themselves were alive, whispering secrets that I was not meant to hear. And then, to my horror, the scratching began to echo my movements, as if something or someone was imitating me from within the darkness. With each shift of my body, the sound would respond in kind, a twisted parody of my own actions. Fear clawed at the edges of my mind as I lay there, paralyzed by the realization that I was not alone in my own home. I wanted to scream, to flee from the room and never look back, but my body refused to obey, rooted to the spot by a primal terror that gripped me with icy fingers. I strained to listen, to discern the source of the sound, but it seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere all at once, filling the room with its malevolent presence. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the scratching ceased, leaving behind an oppressive silence that hung heavy in the air. I lay there for what felt like hours, my heart pounding in my chest, waiting for the inevitable return of the noise. But as the minutes ticked by, it became clear that whatever had been lurking in the darkness had retreated once more, leaving me alone with my racing thoughts. Eventually, exhaustion overtook me, dragging me down into the depths of sleep with a merciful embrace. But even as I drifted off into unconsciousness, I knew that the scratching would haunt my dreams, a relentless reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the edge of reality. The following day dawned bright and clear, the sunlight streaming through the windows and banishing the shadows that had haunted me throughout the night. I tried to push the events of the previous night to the back of my mind, to convince myself that it had all been nothing more than a bad dream brought on by stress and fatigue. But deep down I knew better. I could still feel the weight of the darkness pressing down on me, still hear the echo of the scratching reverberating through the walls, and try as I might to shake off the feeling of unease that clung to me like a second skin. I couldn't help but wonder what other horrors lay hidden within the depths of my own home, waiting to reveal themselves when I least expected it. As the days turned into weeks, the scratching noises became a constant presence in my life a grim reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the edge of my perception. I tried to ignore them, to carry on with my daily routine as if nothing had changed, but the fear that gripped me refused to be silenced. I sought solace in the company of friends and loved ones, hoping that their presence would chase away the shadows that haunted me. But no matter how hard I tried to escape, the scratching followed me wherever I went a constant reminder of the darkness that lurked just beneath the surface of my reality. And then one night, as I lay in bed listening to the ceaseless rhythm of the scratching echoing through the walls, I made a decision. I couldn't live like this anymore, trapped in a prison of my own fear. It was time to confront whatever lurked in the darkness, 
to shine a light on the shadows that had plagued me for so long. With trembling hands, I reached for the lamp on the bedside table, casting its warm glow into the corners of the room. And there, in the faint light of dawn, I saw a shadowy figure crouched in the corner, its eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. But instead of recoiling in terror, I felt a strange sense of calm wash over me, as if a weight had been lifted from my shoulders. For in that moment I realized that the darkness was not something to be feared, but something to be embraced a part of myself that I had long denied. And as I reached out to touch the figure, to make peace with the shadows that had haunted me for so long, I felt a sense of liberation unlike anything I had ever known. For in that moment I had conquered my fear and emerged stronger on the other side. Story 3 The soft glow of the baby monitor cast a comforting light across the darkened room, its gentle hum a reassuring presence as I prepared to turn in for the night. I had checked it countless times before, a routine ritual born out of an abundance of caution and a desire to ensure my baby's safety. But as I glanced at the screen one last time before climbing into bed, my heart skipped a beat. There, in the crib, bathed in the soft light of the monitor, was a figure a shadowy silhouette standing over my sleeping baby, its features obscured by darkness. For a moment I froze, my mind struggling to make sense of what I was seeing. Surely it was just a trick of the light, a figment of my overactive imagination. But as I watched, the figure seemed to move, its form shifting and swaying in the darkness. I rubbed my eyes, willing the image to disappear. But when I looked again, the figure was still there, looming over the crib like a specter from a nightmare. And then, to my horror, I heard it the faint sound of whispering, like the rustling of leaves on a windy night. I strained to make out the words, but they were lost in the static of the monitor, unintelligible whispers that seemed to hang in the air like a foul scent. Panic surged through me, threatening to overwhelm my senses as I struggled to comprehend what was happening. Without a second thought, I leaped out of bed, my heart pounding in my chest as I raced towards the nursery. Every step felt like an eternity, the darkness pressing in around me like a suffocating blanket. But I pushed forward, driven by a primal instinct to protect my child at all costs. As I burst into the nursery, breathless and trembling, I was met with an eerie silence. The crib stood empty, the soft sounds of my baby's breathing the only sound in the room. I scanned the room frantically, searching for any sign of the figure that had haunted me on the monitor, but there was nothing just the empty expanse of the nursery bathed in the pale light of the moon. I stumbled forward, my legs threatening to give out beneath me as I collapsed to my knees beside the crib. Tears stung my eyes as I reached out to touch my baby, relieved to find him safe and sound, oblivious to the terror that had gripped me just moments before. But even as I held him close, a nagging sense of unease lingered in the back of my mind. What had I seen on the monitor? And more importantly, where had it gone? I spent the rest of the night huddled in the nursery, cradling my baby in my arms as if my mere presence could protect him from whatever unseen horrors lurked in the darkness. But try as I might to convince myself that it had all been a trick of the mind, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. The following day dawned bright and clear, the events of the previous night already fading into the recesses of my memory like a half-remembered dream. I tried to carry on with my daily routine, to push aside the lingering sense of unease that gnawed at the edges of my sanity. But no matter how hard I tried to convince myself that it had all been nothing more than a hallucination brought on by exhaustion and stress, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching me, waiting for the opportune moment to strike. As the days turned into weeks, the memory of the figure on the monitor haunted me like a specter, lurking just beyond the edge of my consciousness. I found myself checking the baby monitor obsessively, searching for any sign of the darkness that had haunted me on that fateful night. But each time I looked, the screen remained stubbornly blank, the only sound the gentle hum of static. I tried to tell myself that it was over, 
that whatever had been lurking in the shadows had moved on to torment someone else. But deep down I knew better. I could still hear the faint whispering echoing in the back of my mind, a constant reminder that the darkness was still out there, waiting for the moment when I least expected it. And so, I remained vigilant, keeping a watchful eye on the nursery long into the night, determined to protect my baby from whatever unseen horrors lurked in the darkness. For even though I couldn't see it, I knew that it was there, waiting, watching, biding its time until it could strike again. Story 4 The abandoned house next door had always been a source of fascination and dread for me. Its weather-beaten facade loomed over our neighborhood like a silent sentinel, its windows boarded up and its doors sealed shut as if to ward off prying eyes. And yet, despite its decrepit appearance, there was something undeniably alluring about the place, something that drew me to it like a moth to a flame. It was on one particularly restless night that I first heard it the faint sound of a child's laughter echoing through the stillness of the night. At first I dismissed it as nothing more than a trick of the wind, a figment of my overactive imagination. But as the nights wore on, the laughter grew louder, more insistent, until it seemed to fill the very air around me with its eerie melody. I tried to ignore it to drown it out with the noise of the television or the comforting hum of a fan. But no matter how hard I tried to block it out, the laughter persisted, a constant reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the edge of my perception. And then, one night, curiosity got the better of me. Unable to resist the pull of the unknown any longer, I crept to the window and peered out into the darkness, hoping to catch a glimpse of the source of the laughter. What I saw chilled me to the bone a silhouette, barely visible against the backdrop of the moonlit night, swinging from the rafters of the abandoned house next door. At first I thought it was just a trick of the light, a shadow cast by some errant object caught in the breeze. But then I saw its eyes two pinpricks of light glowing in the darkness, fixed on me with an intensity that sent shivers down my spine. They seemed to pierce through the veil of night, boring into my very soul with their otherworldly gaze. I recoiled in horror, stumbling backwards and tripping over my own feet in my haste to escape the sight before me. I wanted to scream, to flee from the window and never look back, but my body refused to obey, rooted to the spot by a primal terror that gripped me with icy fingers. For what felt like an eternity, I stood there, transfixed by the sight of the figure swinging from the rafters, its laughter echoing in my ears like a sinister symphony. And then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, it was gone, leaving behind nothing but a lingering sense of dread that hung heavy in the air. I spent the rest of the night huddled beneath the covers, unable to shake the image of those glowing eyes from my mind. Every creak of the floorboards, Every gust of wind rattling the window sent shivers down my spine, as if the very walls of my own home were conspiring against me. The following day dawned bright and clear, the events of the previous night already fading into the recesses of my memory like a half-remembered dream. I tried to convince myself that it had all been nothing more than a hallucination brought on by exhaustion and stress, but deep down, I knew better. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong, that the abandoned house next door held secrets darker and more sinister than I could ever imagine. And so despite my better judgment, I found myself drawn back to it, like a moth to a flame. As the days turned into weeks, the laughter continued to haunt me, growing louder and more insistent with each passing night. I tried to ignore it to carry on with my daily routine as if nothing had changed but the darkness that lurked just beyond the edge of my perception refused to be ignored. And then, one night, as I lay in bed, listening to the familiar sound of the child's laughter echoing through the darkness, I made a decision. I couldn't live like this anymore, trapped in a prison of my own fear. 
It was time to confront whatever lurked in the abandoned house next door, to shine a light on the shadows that had plagued me for so long. With trembling hands I reached for the flashlight beside my bed, steeling myself for what lay ahead. Every instinct screamed at me to turn back, to flee from the darkness and never look back. But something inside me refused to be silenced, a stubborn determination to uncover the truth no matter the cost. I slipped out into the night, the darkness pressing in around me like a suffocating blanket as I made my way towards the abandoned house next door. Every step felt like an eternity, the sound of my own heartbeat thundering in my ears as I approached the crumbling facade. As I stood before the boarded up windows, my hand shaking as I reached out to remove the barrier between myself and whatever lay within, a sense of dread washed over me like a tidal wave. But I pushed forward, driven by a primal instinct to confront the darkness that had haunted me for so long. With a creak of protest, the boards gave way, revealing the yawning blackness of the abandoned house beyond. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for what lay ahead, and stepped inside. The air was thick with dust and decay, the floorboards groaning beneath my weight as I made my way through the dilapidated interior. Every sound echoed through the empty halls, sending shivers down my spine as I ventured deeper into the darkness. And then, suddenly I heard it the faint sound of laughter, echoing through the stillness like a beacon in the night. I followed the sound, my heart pounding in my chest as I rounded a corner and came face to face with the source of the laughter. There, in the center of the room, stood the figure from my nightmares a child, barely visible in the dim light, swinging from the rafters with a haunting grace. Its eyes glowed in the darkness, fixed on me with an intensity that sent a chill down my spine. I wanted to run, to flee from the darkness, and never look back. But something held me rooted to the spot, a strange sense of calm washing over me as I stared into the creature's glowing eyes. And then to my surprise it spoke a soft, melodic voice that seemed to echo from the depths of the void. Why have you come here? it asked its words hanging in the air like a whispered secret. I hesitated, unsure of how to respond. I, I heard your laughter, I stammered, my voice barely more than a whisper. I wanted to know what was happening. The child cocked its head to the side, studying me with an intensity that sent shivers down my spine. We are bound to this place, it said, its voice soft and mournful, trapped between worlds, unable to move on. I felt a pang of sympathy for the creature before me, a sense of sorrow for its plight. Is there anything I can do to help? I asked, my voice barely more than a whisper. The child's eyes seemed to brighten at my words, a flicker of hope dancing in their depths. There is one thing it said, its voice barely more than a whisper. You must find the key that unlocks the door to our salvation. I nodded. My determination renewed. I will do whatever it takes, I vowed, my voice steady despite the fear that still lingered in the depths of my soul. With a solemn nod, the child vanished into the darkness, leaving me alone with my thoughts and the weight of my newfound purpose. And as I made my way back into the night, the laughter echoing in my ears like a solemn promise, I knew that my journey was only just beginning. Story 5 the darkness enveloped me like a suffocating blanket, pressing in from all sides as I struggled to make sense of my surroundings. My limbs felt heavy, as if weighed down by some unseen force, and the air was thick with the smell of earth and decay. Panic surged through me as I realized where I was buried alive in a coffin, six feet beneath the ground. My heart pounded in my chest like a drumbeat each thud echoing in the darkness as I fought to control the rising tide of fear that threatened to consume me whole. I tried to move, to push against the confines of the coffin and break free from my earthen prison, but no matter how hard I struggled, I couldn't escape the suffocating embrace of the darkness that surrounded me, trapping me in its cold, clammy grasp. With each passing moment, the air grew thinner 
the walls of the coffin closing in around me like a vise. I clawed desperately at the wood above me, my fingernails scraping against the rough surface as I screamed for help until my throat was raw. But no one heard me, no one came to my rescue. The silence of the grave stretched on for an eternity, broken only by the sound of my own frantic breathing as I struggled to hold on to the last vestiges of consciousness. Time lost all meaning as I lay there in the darkness, trapped in a nightmare from which there seemed to be no escape. The minutes stretched into hours, the hours into days, until I could no longer distinguish between reality and hallucination, between life and death. I tried to find solace in memories of the world above the warmth of the sun on my skin, the laughter of loved ones, the simple pleasures of everyday life. But each memory only served to deepen the despair that gnawed at the edges of my sanity, reminding me of all that I had lost and all that I would never regain. And then, just when I thought I could bear the darkness no longer, a faint glimmer of light pierced the gloom, a ray of hope in the endless expanse of despair. With renewed determination, I redoubled my efforts, clawing at the wood above me with a newfound sense of urgency. And then, with a sudden burst of strength, I felt the wood give way beneath my fingers, splintering and cracking as I pushed through the opening with all the force I could muster. Fresh air flooded into the coffin, cool and invigorating against my skin as I gasped for breath, the sweet taste of freedom tantalizingly close at hand. With one final push, I burst free from the confines of the coffin, the earth crumbling away beneath me as I emerged into the light of day. For a moment I lay there, gasping and coughing as I drank in the sight of the world above, the sun warm against my face as tears of relief streamed down my cheeks. But my joy was short-lived, for as I looked around I realized that I was not alone. Standing before me, their eyes glowing with an otherworldly light, were the figures of those who had come before me, trapped in their own eternal torment. I recoiled in horror, the memory of my ordeal still fresh in my mind as I stumbled backwards, my heart pounding in my chest. But the figures made no move to harm me, their silent presence a testament to the suffering that they had endured. With a sense of grim determination, I made my way back to the surface, my mind reeling with the realization that I had escaped the clutches of death, if only for a moment. But even as I emerged into the light of day, I knew that the darkness would always be there, lurking just beneath the surface, waiting for the moment when it could claim me once more. I crawled out of the freshly disturbed earth, my body aching and covered in dirt, each movement a testament to the ordeal I had just endured. The world around me seemed surreal, distorted by the lingering effects of my near-death experience. As I stumbled through the cemetery, my mind raced with a thousand questions each more terrifying than the last. How had I ended up buried alive? Who had put me there, and why? But try as I might to find answers, the truth remained elusive, shrouded in the darkness that lurked just beyond the edges of my consciousness. All I knew was that I had to keep moving, to put as much distance between myself and the nightmare that had nearly consumed me. With each step, the memories of my time in the coffin grew fainter, replaced by a sense of urgency that drove me forward. I had been given a second chance at life, and I was determined to make the most of it, no matter the cost. But even as I left the cemetery behind me, the feeling of being watched lingered in the back of my mind, a constant reminder of the darkness that still lurked just beyond the edges of my perception. And as I disappeared into the night, a sense of unease settled over me like a shroud, casting a shadow over my newfound freedom. Story 6 The attic had always been a place of mystery and intrigue for me, its dusty corners and cobweb-covered boxes holding secrets long forgotten by time. So when I stumbled upon the old diary hidden amongst the detritus of years gone by, I couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement tinged with trepidation. The diary was weathered and yellowed with age, 
its pages brittle and fragile to the touch. As I flipped through its contents, I felt a thrill of anticipation coursing through my veins, eager to uncover the secrets that lay hidden within. But as I began to read, that thrill quickly turned to horror. The entries detailed a murder that had taken place in my own house decades ago, a brutal crime that had shocked the small town and left its inhabitants reeling in its wake. As I read on, the details of the murder grew more gruesome, the words on the page painting a vivid picture of the violence that had unfolded within these very walls. And then to my horror I came across a passage that sent a chill down my spine a description of the killer, their features eerily similar to my own. I stared at the words on the page, my mind reeling with disbelief. How could this be possible? Was it just a coincidence? or was there something more sinister at play? As I continued to read, the diary revealed more and more details about the murder, each entry painting a picture of a troubled individual driven to madness by their own inner demons. And with each passing page, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was reading about myself, that the killer described in the diary was none other than the person staring back at me in the mirror. I tried to rationalize it, to convince myself that it was all just a figment of my imagination. But the more I read, the more convinced I became that there was a connection between the events described in the diary and the strange occurrences that had been happening in my own life. As I delved deeper into the diary, I uncovered more clues about the identity of the killer, a troubled soul tormented by their own inner darkness, driven to commit unspeakable acts of violence in a desperate bid for redemption. But try as I might to distance myself from the horrors of the past, I couldn't shake the feeling that the diary held the key to unlocking the mysteries of my own existence. And so with a sense of grim determination, I set out to uncover the truth, no matter the cost. As I pored over the pages of the diary, I began to notice strange similarities between the events described within its faded pages and the strange occurrences that had been happening in my own life. It was as if history was repeating itself, playing out the same tragic tale over and over again. But as I read on, I began to uncover more clues about the identity of the killer, a troubled soul tormented by their own inner demons, driven to commit unspeakable acts of violence in a desperate bid for redemption. With each revelation, the pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place, painting a picture of a person consumed by darkness their very existence a reflection of the horrors that had unfolded within these very walls. I tried to distance myself from the revelations of the diary, to convince myself that I was not the same person described within its pages. But the more I read, the more convinced I became that there was a connection between the events of the past and the nightmares that haunted my waking hours. And then, one night, as I lay awake in bed, the truth came crashing down upon me like a tidal wave. I was the killer the same person described in the diary, driven to madness by my own inner demons, doomed to repeat the same cycle of violence and despair for all eternity. I recoiled in horror, the weight of my own guilt pressing down on me like a leaden shroud. How had I not seen it before? How had I allowed myself to become consumed by the darkness that lurked within me? oblivious to the horrors that I had unleashed upon the world. But even as I grappled with the enormity of my actions, a sense of grim determination washed over me. I knew what I had to do I had to confront the darkness that lurked within me, to face the demons that had driven me to commit such unspeakable acts. With trembling hands, I closed the diary and made my way downstairs each step a testament to the weight of the burden that I now carried. But as I reached the front door, a sense of unease washed over me, a feeling that I was not alone in the darkness. I hesitated, my hand hovering over the doorknob as I searched for the strength to face what lay beyond. And then, with a deep breath, I pushed open the door and stepped out into the night, ready to confront the darkness that lurked within me once and for all.
Story 7 The night began like any other, the sky painted in shades of indigo as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows that stretched across the sleepy town. But as the hours passed and darkness settled over the land, a strange fog began to roll in from the surrounding hills, creeping through the streets like a silent predator. At first I paid it little mind, dismissing it as nothing more than a trick of the weather. But as the fog thickened and enveloped everything in its chilling embrace, a sense of unease settled over me like a heavy cloak. I stood on the porch of my house, peering out into the swirling mist with a growing sense of trepidation. There was something unnatural about it, something otherworldly that sent shivers down my spine. And then, in the midst of the fog, I saw them the faces twisted in agony, their features contorted in pain as they reached out to me with spectral hands, as if pleading for release from their eternal torment. I stumbled backwards in horror, my heart pounding in my chest as I tried to make sense of what I was seeing. Were these apparitions real, or merely figments of my overactive imagination? But even as I tried to rationalize what I was seeing, the faces drew closer, their eyes boring into mine with an intensity that sent a chill down my spine. I could hear their whispers echoing in the darkness, a cacophony of voices pleading for mercy, for salvation from whatever horrors lay beyond. Without thinking, I stepped forward, drawn inexorably towards the spectral figures that beckoned to me from the depths of the fog. Every fiber of my being screamed at me to turn back, to flee from the darkness and never look back. But something inside me refused to be silenced, a stubborn determination to uncover the truth no matter the cost. As I moved deeper into the fog, the faces seemed to multiply, appearing and disappearing in the swirling mist like phantoms in the night. I could feel their presence pressing in around me, suffocating me with their silent screams and desperate pleas. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the fog began to dissipate, melting away into the darkness as if it had never been. I stood there, panting and trembling, my mind reeling with the magnitude of what I had just witnessed. Had it all been a hallucination, brought on by the strange atmosphere of the fog? Or had I truly glimpsed into the realm of the supernatural? witnessing the souls of the departed trapped in their eternal torment. I may never know the answer, but one thing was certain the experience had changed me in ways I could never have imagined. From that night on, I would always be haunted by the faces in the fog, a constant reminder of the thin veil that separates the world of the living from the realm of the dead. As I made my way back to my house, the events of the night weighing heavily on my mind, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had glimpsed into something far greater and more mysterious than I could ever comprehend. And as I closed the door behind me, shutting out the darkness of the night, I knew that the memories of what I had seen would stay with me forever, a silent testament to the mysteries that lurked just beyond the edge of our understanding. In the days that followed the eerie encounter with the faces in the fog, a palpable sense of unease settled over the town like a heavy fog lingering in the air. Whispers of strange happenings circulated among the townsfolk, tales of spectral apparitions and unexplained phenomena that sent shivers down their spines. I found myself drawn to the library, poring over dusty tomes and ancient manuscripts in search of answers to the mysteries that had plagued me since that fateful night. But the more I searched, the more elusive the truth became, slipping through my fingers like grains of sand. And yet, despite the lack of concrete answers, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something deeper at play, something lurking just beyond the edge of my perception. It was as if the town itself was holding onto secrets that it was unwilling or unable to reveal. As the weeks turned into months, the memory of the faces in the fog began to fade replaced by the mundane rhythms of everyday life. But try as I might to move on, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that the darkness that had enveloped me on that fateful night was still lurking just beyond the edge of my consciousness. 
And then one night, as I lay in bed listening to the familiar sounds of the night, a chill swept through the room, sending goosebumps prickling across my skin. I sat up, my heart pounding in my chest as I scanned the darkness for any sign of the spectral figures that had haunted me in the fog. But there was nothing, no faces, no whispers, only the oppressive silence of the night. And yet, despite the absence of any tangible threat, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was not alone, that the darkness was still out there, waiting for the opportune moment to strike. With a sense of grim determination, I resolved to confront whatever lurked in the shadows, to shine a light on the mysteries that had plagued me for so long. For even though I may never uncover the truth, I knew that I could not rest until I had faced the darkness head on, no matter the cost. Story 8 The whispers began as a faint murmur, barely audible over the gentle hum of the ceiling fan. At first I dismissed them as nothing more than a trick of the wind, a figment of my overactive imagination. But as the nights wore on, the whispers grew louder, more insistent, until they seemed to fill the very air around me with their sinister melody. I tried to ignore them, to drown them out with the noise of the television or the comforting hum of a fan, but no matter how hard I tried to block them out, the whispers persisted, a constant reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the edges of my perception. And then one night, as I lay in bed listening to the familiar sounds of the night, the whispers seemed to take on a life of their own, their words twisting and turning like serpents in the darkness. I strained to make out what they were saying, but the words were lost in the static of the night, unintelligible whispers that seemed to hang in the air like a foul scent. But even as I struggled to comprehend the meaning behind the whispers, a sense of unease settled over me like a heavy weight pressing down on my chest and making it difficult to breathe. I could feel eyes watching me from the shadows, their gaze burning into my soul with an intensity that sent shivers down my spine. With a trembling hand, I reached for the lamp beside my bed, casting a soft glow across the room as I searched for the source of the whispers. And then, as if drawn by some unseen force, my gaze fell upon the mirror hanging on the wall opposite my bed. At first, I saw nothing out of the ordinary a reflection of myself staring back at me with an expression of mild curiosity. But as I stared into the depths of the mirror, I saw something shift behind my own reflection, a flicker of movement in the darkness that sent a chill down my spine. And then, to my horror, I heard it the whispers, emanating from the depths of the mirror like a siren's song. They spoke of unspeakable horrors of whispered promises of power beyond imagining, their words twisting and turning like serpents in the darkness. I recoiled in horror, my heart pounding in my chest as I stumbled backwards, unable to tear my gaze away from the mirror. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, until they seemed to fill the room with their sinister melody, drowning out the sounds of the night. With a sudden burst of courage, I reached out to touch the mirror, my fingertips grazing the cool surface as I whispered a prayer for protection. But as my hand made contact with the glass, a jolt of electricity shot through me, sending me reeling backwards with a cry of pain. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the whisper stopped, leaving behind nothing but a suffocating silence that seemed to press in on me from all sides. I lay there, trembling and disoriented, my mind reeling with the magnitude of what I had just experienced. For hours I lay there in the darkness, unable to sleep, unable to shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. And then, as the first light of dawn began to filter through the curtains, I made a decision I had to confront whatever lurked within the mirror, to uncover the truth, no matter the cost. With a sense of grim determination, I rose from my bed and made my way across the room, my heart pounding in my chest as I stood before the mirror once more. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for what lay ahead, and then, with trembling hands, I reached out and touched the glass. For a moment, nothing happened, and then slowly, 
The surface of the mirror began to ripple like the surface of a pond disturbed by a stone. I watched in horror as my reflection shifted and changed before my eyes, twisting and contorting into grotesque shapes that bore no resemblance to the person staring back at me from the other side. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the ripples ceased, leaving behind nothing but a sense of profound unease. I stared at my reflection, my heart pounding in my chest as I tried to make sense of what I had just witnessed. But the reflection staring back at me was not my own, it was something else entirely, something dark and malevolent that seemed to leer at me from behind the glass. Its smile was twisted and cruel, its eyes filled with a hunger that sent shivers down my spine. I stumbled backwards, my breath coming in ragged gasps as I tried to comprehend the enormity of what I had just witnessed. Had I just glimpsed into the realm of the supernatural, or was I simply losing my mind? With a sense of mounting dread, I turned away from the mirror and fled from the room, the echoes of the whisper still ringing in my ears. But even as I left the mirror behind, I knew that its dark secrets would haunt me for the rest of my days a constant reminder of the darkness that lurks just beyond the edge of our understanding. Story 9 The night was still, the air heavy with the weight of impending darkness as I stood before the mirror in my bedroom. At first everything seemed normal, the reflection staring back at me was my own, its features familiar and unremarkable. But then, as I moved to adjust my tie, something strange happened. My reflection moved too, mirroring my actions with a sinister twist. Its movements were exaggerated, almost mocking in their perfection, as if it were taunting me from the other side of the glass. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest as I stared at the reflection before me. This couldn't be happening, I told myself. It was impossible. And yet there was the image of myself, moving of its own accord, its movements eerily synchronized with my own. With a growing sense of unease, I reached out to touch the glass, expecting to feel the cold, smooth surface beneath my fingertips. But instead, my hand passed through the mirror as if it were nothing more than a thin veil separating me from the other side. I stumbled backwards, my mind reeling with shock and confusion. What was happening to me? Was I losing my mind or was there something more sinister at play? As if in answer to my unspoken question, the reflection began to move again, its movements growing more erratic with each passing moment. It twisted and contorted, its features morphing into grotesque caricatures of my own until I could no longer bear to look at it. But try as I might to tear my gaze away, I found myself unable to move, rooted to the spot by some unseen force. And then, to my horror, I realized that the reflection was growing closer, inching its way towards me with each passing second. I tried to scream, to call out for help, but no sound escaped my lips. I was trapped, helpless to do anything but watch as the reflection drew nearer, its eyes burning with a malevolent light that sent shivers down my spine. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the reflection stopped, freezing in place just inches from my own face. I could feel its breath on my skin, cold and clammy, sending a chill down my spine as I stared into its soulless eyes. For a moment, everything was still, the air thick with tension as I waited for something anything to happen. But then, with a sudden burst of movement, the reflection lunged forward, its hands reaching out to grab me with a strength that belied its ethereal form. I stumbled backwards, my heart pounding in my chest as I tried to flee from the nightmare that had taken hold of me. But no matter how fast I ran, the reflection was always there, its presence looming over me like a shadow in the night. I knew that I had to find a way to escape, to break free from the clutches of the reflection before it was too late. But try as I might to find a solution, my mind came up blank, my thoughts clouded by fear and confusion. And then, just when it seemed like all hope was lost, a voice whispered in the darkness a voice that seemed to come from within the depths of the mirror itself. 
Embrace me, it hissed, its words dripping with malice. Embrace the darkness that lurks within you, and together we shall rule over this world as kings. I recoiled in horror, my mind reeling with the enormity of what I had just heard. Was this the voice of the reflection, or was it something else entirely, and more importantly could I trust it? With a sense of grim determination, I squared my shoulders and faced the reflection head on. I will not succumb to you, I declared, my voice trembling but firm. I will fight until my last breath to break free from your grasp. For a moment there was silence, as if the reflection were considering my words. And then with a guttural roar, it lunged forward once more, its hands outstretched as if to crush the life from my body. But this time I was ready. With a sudden burst of strength, I reached out and grabbed hold of the reflection's hands, pushing back with all the force I could muster. And then, with a blinding flash of light, the reflection shattered into a million pieces, disappearing into the darkness from whence it came. I collapsed to the ground, gasping for breath as the weight of what had just happened washed over me. But even as I lay there battered and bruised, I knew that the nightmare was far from over. For as long as the mirror remained, the darkness would always be there, lurking just beyond the edge of my perception, waiting for the opportune moment to strike. And so, with a sense of grim determination, I rose to my feet and vowed to never forget the horrors that I had witnessed that fateful night, lest they return to claim me once more. Story 10 As I slowly regained consciousness, the sterile scent of the hospital room assaulted my senses, mingling with the soft hum of medical equipment and the low murmur of voices. Blinking groggily, I struggled to make sense of my surroundings, my mind still foggy from the depths of sleep. As I turned my head, I saw a group of doctors and nurses gathered around my bedside, their faces drawn with concern as they spoke in hushed tones. For a moment, I couldn't quite comprehend what they were saying, the words slipping through my grasp like sand through my grass. But then, as the fog began to lift, the pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place. They were talking about me about how I had been in a coma for years, how my condition had baffled even the most experienced medical professionals. I tried to speak, to ask them what had happened, but my voice caught in my throat, choked by the weight of uncertainty that hung in the air. How could I have been in a coma for years? What had caused it? And why couldn't I remember anything? The doctors and nurses exchanged uneasy glances, their expressions mirroring the confusion that churned in my own mind. They tried to explain, to reassure me that I was safe now, but their words fell on deaf ears as I struggled to come to terms with the reality of my situation. And then, just as suddenly as the fog had lifted, a wave of nausea washed over me, dragging me back into the depths of unconsciousness. I fought against it clawing desperately at the darkness that threatened to consume me once more, but it was no use. With a final gasp, I slipped back into the void, my mind swirling with unanswered questions and unspoken fears. When I awoke again, it was to the sound of voices familiar voices, tinged with concern and relief. Slowly I opened my eyes, blinking against the harsh glare of the overhead lights as I tried to focus on the figures gathered around my bed. It was my family, my mother, my father, my siblings, all of them staring down at me with tears in their eyes. For a moment I couldn't quite comprehend what was happening, the memories of the coma still fresh in my mind like a dream that refused to fade. But then, as they began to speak, the pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place. They told me about the accident, the car crash that had left me clinging to life, my body broken and battered beyond recognition. They told me about the long years I had spent in a coma, the countless surgeries and treatments that had kept me alive against all odds. I listened in silence, the weight of their words settling over me like a heavy blanket. It was all too much to process the idea that I had been unconscious for so long. 
that life had gone on without me while I lay trapped in the darkness of my own mind. And yet, even as they spoke, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was not quite right, that there was more to my coma than met the eye. It was as if a shadow lingered at the edges of my consciousness, whispering secrets that I could not yet comprehend. As the days turned into weeks, I began to notice strange occurrences, odd coincidences, and unexplained phenomena that seemed to follow me wherever I went. Objects would move of their own accord, strange noises echoed through the halls of the hospital at night, and I would catch glimpses of shadowy figures lurking in the corners of my vision. At first I tried to dismiss them as hallucinations, the product of a mind still reeling from the trauma of my accident, but the more I tried to rationalize them away, the more convinced I became that there was something sinister at play that I had brought something back with me from the other side. I confided in the doctors and nurses, telling them about the strange occurrences that plagued me day and night, but they dismissed my concerns, chalking them up to the stress and anxiety of my recovery. But try as I might to convince myself that I was simply imagining things, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. It was as if a dark cloud hung over me, casting a pall over my newfound lease on life and filling me with a sense of dread that I couldn't shake. And then one night, as I lay in my hospital bed staring up at the ceiling, I felt that the presence that had been haunting me since the moment I woke from my coma. It was a cold, clammy sensation like fingers tracing down my spine, sending shivers of fear coursing through my veins. I turned my head, searching for the source of the sensation, and that's when I saw it the figure standing at the foot of my bed, its features obscured by the darkness that surrounded it. For a moment I couldn't move, couldn't breathe, as the realization washed over me like a tidal wave. It was the same figure I had seen in my dreams, the same figure that had haunted me throughout my coma. And now it was here, in the flesh staring down at me with eyes that burned with a malevolent light. With a cry of terror, I reached for the call button beside my bed, frantically summoning the nurses to my side. But when they arrived, there was no sign of the figure, no trace of the darkness that had enveloped me just moments before. They tried to reassure me, to convince me that it was all just a hallucination brought on by stress and exhaustion. But deep down, I knew the truth I had brought something back with me from the other side, something that refused to be ignored. And as I lay there in the darkness, the echoes of my screams still ringing in my ears, I knew that my journey was far from over that the darkness that had followed me from the other side would stop at nothing to claim me once and for all. Story 11 The discovery of the photograph was unexpected, to say the least. I had been rummaging through boxes of old belongings in the attic, searching for anything of value or sentimentality, when I stumbled upon it tucked away in a dusty corner. At first glance it seemed like any other family portrait a snapshot frozen in time, capturing a moment of happiness and togetherness, but as I examined it closer I realized that there was something off about the image, something that sent a shiver down my spine. The faces of the family in the photograph were twisted in agony, their features contorted in pain as if they were trapped in the throes of some unseen torment. Their eyes bore into mine with a haunting intensity, pleading for mercy that would never come. I recoiled in horror, dropping the photograph as if it were burning hot to the touch. What had I stumbled upon? Who were these people, and why did they bear such an uncanny resemblance to my own family? With trembling hands, I picked up the photograph once more, studying it with a mixture of fascination and dread. There was something about it that seemed familiar, as if I had seen these faces somewhere before, but try as I might, I couldn't place where or when. As I continued to study the photograph, a sense of unease settled over me like a heavy weight, casting a pall over the once familiar surroundings of the attic. It was as if the air itself had grown thick with the weight of the secrets that lay hidden within the image. I tried to shake off the feeling of dread that had taken hold of me, 
to convince myself that it was all just a trick of the light or a figment of my overactive imagination. But deep down, I knew that there was something more to the photograph than met the eye that it held secrets that I was not yet meant to uncover. Determined to unravel the mystery of the photograph, I set out to learn everything I could about its origins. I scoured old family albums and sifted through boxes of documents, searching for any clue that might shed light on the identity of the people in the image. But no matter how hard I searched, I came up empty-handed. There was no mention of the family in any of the documents or records that I could find, no indication of who they were or how they were connected to me. Frustrated and perplexed, I turned to the only other person who might be able to shed some light on the mystery my grandmother. She had always been the keeper of family lore, the one who knew all the secrets and hidden truths that had been passed down through generations. When I showed her the photograph, her face grew pale, her eyes widening with recognition. Where did you find this, she asked, her voice barely above a whisper. In the attic, I replied, my own voice trembling with uncertainty. Do you know who these people are? Are they? Family. My grandmother hesitated, her gaze fixed on the photograph as if she were seeing it for the first time. They were, she said, finally, her voice barely audible. But they're gone now. All of them. I felt a chill run down my spine at her words. Gone. What do you mean, gone? She sighed, her expression pained. It's a long story, one that I never thought I'd have to tell. But it seems that the time has come for the truth to be revealed. And so, with a heavy heart, my grandmother began to recount the tale of the family in the photograph, a tale of tragedy and loss, of dark secrets that had been buried for generations. According to my grandmother, the family in the photograph had once been prosperous and well-respected members of the community, their names synonymous with wealth and privilege. But behind closed doors, they harbored a dark secret, a secret that would ultimately lead to their downfall. As the story unfolded, I listened in rapt attention, hanging on my grandmother's every word. She spoke of a curse that had been placed upon the family generations ago a curse that condemned them to suffer for their sins for all eternity. And as she spoke, I couldn't shake the feeling that the curse was somehow connected to the photograph, that the faces twisted in agony were not just random strangers, but my own ancestors, doomed to relive their torment for all eternity. When my grandmother finished her tale, there was a long silence, broken only by the sound of our breathing. I stared down at the photograph, my mind swirling with questions and doubts. Was it possible that the curse still lingered, that it had somehow followed me back from the other side? I tried to push the thought from my mind, to convince myself that it was all just a story, a figment of my grandmother's imagination. But deep down, I knew that there was more to the mystery than met the eye that the photograph held secrets that I was not yet meant to uncover. As I returned the photograph to its rightful place in the attic, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that the faces twisted in agony were somehow reaching out to me from beyond the grave. And as I closed the door behind me, shutting out the darkness of the attic, I knew that the mystery of the photograph would haunt me for the rest of my days, a constant reminder of the darkness that lurks just beyond the edge of our understanding. Story 12 the arrival of the package was unexpected, to say the least. It was a nondescript box, wrapped in brown paper and tied with fraying twine, with no return address or indication of who it was from. At first, I hesitated to open it, unsure of what might be lurking inside. But curiosity got the better of me, and with trembling hands, I carefully untied the twine and peeled back the layers of paper. Inside, Nestled among crumpled newspaper was a doll, a porcelain doll, with delicate features and glassy eyes that seemed to follow me as I moved. Its resemblance to me was uncanny, from the color of its hair to the shape of its nose, and for a moment I felt a chill run down my spine. 
who would send me such a strange and unsettling gift, and more importantly, why. I searched the box for any clues, any indication of who it might be from, but there was nothing not even a note to explain its presence. As I examined the doll closer, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something off about it, something that filled me with a sense of unease. Its eyes seemed to bore into mine with an intensity that sent shivers down my spine, and I could swear that I heard it whispering my name in a voice barely above a whisper. I tried to rationalize it away, to convince myself that it was just my imagination playing tricks on me. But no matter how hard I tried to shake the feeling of dread that had settled over me, I couldn't escape the feeling that the doll was somehow alive, that it was watching me with malicious intent. That night, as I lay in bed staring up at the ceiling, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. It was as if the air itself had grown thick with the weight of the doll's presence, suffocating me with its silent malevolence. And then, just as I was on the verge of drifting off to sleep, I heard it the whispering, echoing through the darkness like a serpent's hiss. At first I thought it was just my imagination, the product of an overactive mind and a restless night. But then I heard it again, clearer this time unmistakable in its intent. It was calling my name my full name, whispered in a voice that sent a chill down my spine. I lay there frozen in fear, unable to move, unable to escape the sound of the doll's voice as it filled the room with its haunting melody. With a trembling hand, I reached for the lamp beside my bed, casting a soft glow across the room as I searched for the source of the whispers. And there, on the dresser across the room, I saw the doll, its porcelain eyes gleaming in the dim light as it stared back at me with a malevolent grin. I gasped in horror, my heart pounding in my chest as I realized that the whispers were coming from the doll itself. It was alive. I realized possessed by some unseen force that sought to torment me from beyond the grave. With a cry of terror, I leapt out of bed and snatched up the doll, intending to rid myself of its presence once and for all. But no matter how hard I tried to destroy it, it seemed to resist my efforts, its porcelain body unyielding to my attempts to break it. In desperation, I threw the doll across the room watching in horror as it landed with a soft thud against the wall. But even as it lay there, broken and battered, I could still hear the whispers echoing through the darkness, growing louder and more insistent with each passing moment. I tried to ignore them, to drown them out with the noise of the television or the comforting hum of a fan. But no matter how hard I tried to block them out, the whispers persisted a constant reminder of the darkness that lurched just beyond the edges of my perception. And then, just as suddenly as they had begun, the whispers stopped, leaving behind nothing but a suffocating silence that seemed to press in on me from all sides. I lay there, trembling and disoriented, my mind reeling with the magnitude of what I had just experienced. Had it all been a hallucination? brought on by the stress and anxiety of my recent experiences, or had I truly glimpsed into the realm of the supernatural, witnessing firsthand the malevolent power of the doll that had been sent to torment me? I may never know the answer, but one thing was certain I could never look at that doll the same way again. And as I lay there in the darkness, haunted by the memory of its porcelain eyes and whispered threats, I knew that the nightmares would never truly end that the doll would always be there, waiting to drag me back into its sinister embrace. Story 13 As I slowly opened my eyes, the soft morning light filtering through the curtains gently kissed my face. The room was bathed in a tranquil glow, and for a moment I relished in the blissful ignorance of the day ahead. But as consciousness fully embraced me, a creeping unease settled in the pit of my stomach. I blinked a few times, trying to shake off the remnants of sleep, only to find myself staring at a scene straight out of a nightmare. Handprints adorned every inch of my bedroom walls, overlapping in a chaotic display, 
as if someone had been desperately clawing their way out. My heart thundered in my chest as I sat up, trying to make sense of the surreal sight before me. But then a shiver ran down my spine as realization dawned upon me those handprints, they were mine. Every single one of them bore the unique pattern of my fingers, as if I had frantically pressed against the walls in a desperate bid for escape. Panic gripped me like icy tendrils, threatening to suffocate me in its relentless embrace. I stumbled out of bed, my feet landing on the cold hardwood floor with a hollow thud. As I moved closer to the walls, the handprints seemed to mock me, their ghostly imprints haunting every corner of the room. How could this be possible? What could have driven me to leave such eerie marks in my own sanctuary? With trembling hands, I reached out to touch one of the handprints, half expecting it to vanish like a mirage. But the surface beneath my fingertips was solid and real, sending a jolt of fear coursing through my veins. My mind raced, desperately trying to piece together fragments of memory that seemed to elude me like elusive shadows in the night. And then, like a bolt from the blue, a faint recollection flickered in the recesses of my mind a dream, vivid and haunting, where I found myself trapped in a labyrinth of darkness, my own hands clawing at the walls in a desperate bid for freedom. But dreams were supposed to stay confined within the realm of the subconscious, weren't they? They weren't supposed to spill over into reality with such terrifying clarity. I stumbled backwards, my breaths coming in ragged gasps as I struggled to make sense of the inexplicable. Every fiber of my being screamed for me to flee, to escape the suffocating confines of my own bedroom, but a morbid curiosity held me in its grip. What if there was more to this than met the eye? What if there was a rational explanation lurking just beyond my reach? With trembling legs, I made my way to the window, the cool glass offering a sliver of solace amidst the chaos that engulfed me. The world outside seemed eerily normal, oblivious to the silent turmoil that raged within the confines of my room. But as I gazed out at the familiar sights, a sense of dread settled over me like a heavy cloak. What if this wasn't an isolated incident? What if there were other signs, other clues lurking in the shadows, waiting to be unearthed? With a newfound determination, I set out to scour every inch of my apartment, searching for any semblance of an explanation, no matter how improbable it seemed. But as the hours stretched into eternity, my efforts proved futile, yielding nothing but frustration and despair. There were no hidden passages, no secret messages concealed within the walls, just the suffocating silence of unanswered questions. Exhausted and defeated, I returned to my bedroom, the handprints still mocking me with their silent accusation. And as I sank to the floor, my back against the wall, I couldn't help but wonder was this just the beginning? Or was it the end of something far more sinister, lurking just beyond the edges of my consciousness, waiting to consume me whole? Story 14 The morning had dawned with a peculiar stillness, the air heavy with an ominous foreboding that sent shivers down my spine. I had awoken to find my bedroom cloaked in an eerie silence, the remnants of the previous night's unsettling encounter still fresh in my mind. But little did I know, the day held even more inexplicable mysteries in store for me. As I peered out the window, my eyes widened in disbelief at the surreal sight unfolding before me. A funeral procession snaked its way down the street, mourners dressed in somber black trailing behind a hearse adorned with flowers. But what chilled me to the bone was the sight of the coffin identical to mine in every way, as if a macabre mirror image of my own demise. A knot formed in the pit of my stomach as I watched in stunned silence, my mind struggling to comprehend the bizarre spectacle unfolding before me. How could this be happening? Was I witnessing some twisted prank, a cruel joke orchestrated by unseen hands? Or was there something far more sinister at play, lurking just beyond the veil of reality? Driven by a mix of curiosity and dread, 
I hastily threw on some clothes and rushed outside, my heart hammering in my chest like a drumbeat of impending doom. But as I stepped onto the pavement, a wave of confusion washed over me. There was no sign of the funeral procession, no trace of the mourners or the hearse that had seemed so real just moments ago. I stood there, rooted to the spot, my mind reeling with disbelief. Had I imagined the whole thing, was my sanity slipping through my fingers like grains of sand? But deep down, a nagging voice whispered that there was more to this than met the eye, that I had stumbled upon a mystery far beyond my comprehension. With trembling hands, I reached for my phone, desperate for some semblance of rationality in the midst of the chaos that threatened to consume me. But as I scrolled through the messages and missed calls, I found no answers, only a growing sense of unease gnawing at the edges of my consciousness. As the day wore on, I found myself consumed by a relentless sense of paranoia, my every move shadowed by the specter of impending doom. Everywhere I turned, I felt as though unseen eyes were watching me, their gaze piercing through the veil of reality with unnerving clarity. Nightfall brought little solace, the darkness serving only to heighten my sense of isolation and fear. I tossed and turned in bed, haunted by visions of my own funeral, the coffin a stark reminder of the fragile line between life and death. But just as I felt myself slipping into the abyss of despair, a faint glimmer of hope pierced the darkness of memory, buried deep within the recesses of my mind, resurfacing like a beacon of light in the gloom. I remembered a time, long ago, when I had stumbled upon an old book in my grandmother's attic, its pages yellowed with age and wisdom. Within its weathered covers lay the secrets of ancient rites and rituals, whispers of a world beyond the realm of mortal understanding. With a newfound resolve, I set out to uncover the truth, delving into the depths of forgotten lore in search of answers that had eluded me thus far. The journey was fraught with peril each page a labyrinth of cryptic symbols and arcane incantations. But amidst the chaos I found clarity a revelation that shook me to my core, unraveling the fabric of reality itself. For buried within the ancient texts lay the key to my salvation, a ritual that promised to banish the specter of death and restore balance to the universe. With trembling hands I gathered the necessary ingredients each one a testament to the power of ancient magic. And as I stood before the flickering flame of a candle, reciting the incantation with a voice that trembled with determination, I felt a surge of energy coursing through my veins, a force beyond comprehension guiding my hand. And then in a blinding flash of light, it was over the darkness that had gripped my soul lifting like a veil replaced by a sense of peace and clarity that I had thought lost forever. I had cheated death itself, defying the laws of nature with a single act of defiance. As I stepped outside into the cool night air, a sense of euphoria washed over me, the weight of the world lifting from my shoulders like a burden lifted. And as I gazed up at the stars, their light shining down upon me like a benediction, I knew that I had emerged from the darkness stronger than ever before, a beacon of hope in a world plagued by uncertainty and fear. Story 15 The discovery of the hidden room in my house was a revelation that sent shock waves through the very foundation of my reality. It was a cold winter's evening when I stumbled upon it, my curiosity piqued by a loose floorboard in the corner of the living room. With a sense of trepidation mingled with excitement, I pried the board loose, revealing a dark void beneath. Heart pounding in my chest, I reached into the darkness, fingers brushing against cool metal handle. With a deep breath I pulled, and the floorboard creaked open, revealing a narrow staircase descending into the depths below. The air was thick with dust, and the musty scent of ages passed sending a shiver down my spine as I descended into the unknown. As I reached the bottom of the staircase, my eyes widened in disbelief at the sight that greeted me. The hidden room stretched out before me, illuminated by the soft glow of moonlight filtering in through a small, dusty window. 
but it was not the room itself that filled me with dread, it was what lay within. Toys old and forgotten lay scattered across the floor, their once bright colors faded with time. Dolls with missing limbs stared back at me with vacant eyes, their silent screams echoing in the stillness of the room. But it was the photographs that lined the walls that truly sent a chill down my spine. They were children, dozens of them smiling faces frozen in time, their innocence captured for eternity. But as I looked closer, a sense of unease gnawed at the edges of my consciousness. These were not just any children, they were the faces of those who had gone missing, their disappearances shrouded in mystery and sorrow. My mind reeled with the implications of what I had stumbled upon had this hidden room been the lair of a kidnapper a predator preying on the innocent? Or was there something far more sinister at play, something beyond the realm of human understanding? As I stood there, paralyzed by fear and uncertainty, the sound pierced the silence a faint echo of laughter, distant yet unmistakable. My blood ran cold as I realized it was the laughter of children, echoing from the very walls of the room itself. With a sense of dread coursing through my veins, I moved closer to the source of the sound, my heart pounding in my chest like a drumbeat of impending doom. But as I reached out to touch the wall, the laughter ceased, replaced by an eerie silence that seemed to suffocate me in its embrace. I recoiled in horror, the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end as a chill ran down my spine. What dark secrets lay hidden within these walls? What unseen force lurked in the shadows, waiting to ensnare me in its grasp? With trembling hands, I reached for my phone, desperate for some semblance of connection to the outside world. But as I dialed the emergency number, a voice echoed in the darkness a whisper, barely audible yet filled with a malevolent intent. Leave this place, it hissed, the words sending a shiver down my spine. Leave before it's too late. I stumbled backwards, my heart racing as I struggled to make sense of the voice that seemed to emanate from the very depths of the room itself. Was I losing my mind, or was there truly something sinister lurking in the shadows? Driven by a primal instinct to flee, I turned and ran, the sound of my footsteps echoing through the narrow confines of the hidden room. But as I reached the staircase and scrambled up the steps, a sense of dread washed over me like a tidal wave, threatening to drag me down into the abyss below. With a final burst of adrenaline-fueled determination, I burst through the trap door and into the safety of the living room above. Gasping for breath, I collapsed onto the floor, the weight of what I had witnessed bearing down on me like a crushing weight. But even as I lay there trembling and exhausted, I knew that the nightmare was far from over. The hidden room a dark and malevolent presence lurking within its depths would haunt me for eternity, a reminder of the thin veil that separates the world of the living from the realm of the dead. Story 16 As consciousness slowly seeped into my groggy mind, I found myself enveloped in an eerie darkness, the cold touch of metal restraints digging into my wrists and ankles. Panic surged through me as I struggled against my bonds, the muffled sound of whispers filling the air around me like ghostly echoes in the void. The figures, shrouded in shadow and obscured by grotesque masks, moved with a sinister grace, their movements synchronized as they closed in around me. My heart thundered in my chest, each beat a desperate plea for escape as I frantically searched for any sign of a way out. But the room offered no solace, its walls seemingly closing in on me with each passing moment, trapping me in a nightmare from which I couldn't wake. I called out, my voice a hoarse whisper in the oppressive silence, but received no response, only the haunting echo of my own fear. The figures drew nearer, their gleaming surgical tools catching the faint light filtering through the darkness. Each blade seemed to glint with malevolence, promising pain and suffering beyond imagination. I squeezed my eyes shut, willing myself to wake from this twisted dream, but when I opened them again, the nightmare persisted. Unable to escape, 
I braced myself for the inevitable, the icy grip of dread tightening its hold on my trembling form. The figures loomed over me, their whispered words a cacophony of incomprehensible syllables that sent shivers down my spine. I strained to understand, but their language was foreign to my ears, a dark melody of unknown origin. With trembling hands, they began their grisly work, their movements precise and calculated as they dissected the very fabric of my being. Pain lanced through me like white-hot fire, each incision tearing away a piece of my sanity until all that remained was raw, unadulterated terror. Time lost all meaning as the ordeal dragged on, each agonizing moment stretching into eternity. I begged for mercy, pleaded for release from this waking nightmare. But my words fell on deaf ears, swallowed by the oppressive silence of the void. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, it was over. The figures retreated into the darkness, leaving me battered and broken, my mind reeling from the horrors I had endured. I lay there, gasping for breath, my body racked with pain as I struggled to make sense of what had just transpired. But there was no sense to be found no rational explanation for the nightmare that had befallen me. All that remained was the chilling certainty that I had glimpsed into the abyss, stared into the heart of darkness, and found only madness staring back at me. In the days that followed, I became a prisoner of my own mind, haunted by visions of masked figures and whispered incantations that seemed to echo in the recesses of my soul. I sought solace in the light of day, but even then, the shadows clung to me like a shroud, a constant reminder of the horrors that lurked just beyond the edge of perception. But despite the nightmares that plagued my every waking moment, I refused to surrender to despair. With each passing day I fought to reclaim my sanity, to banish the darkness that threatened to consume me whole. And though the scars of that fateful night may never fully heal, I carry with me a newfound resilience a strength forged in the crucible of adversity. For even in the darkest of times, there is light to be found, a glimmer of hope that burns eternal in the heart of every soul brave enough to face the unknown. So I press onward, guided by the flickering beacon of hope that shines within me, knowing that no matter what horrors may lie ahead, I will face them head on, armed with the knowledge that I am stronger than the darkness that seeks to devour me. As the days stretched into weeks, I found myself consumed by an insatiable thirst for answers. What had happened to me on that fateful night? Who were those masked figures, and what dark purpose drove them to torment me so? Driven by a desperate need for closure, I embarked on a journey into the unknown, scouring ancient tomes and forbidden texts in search of the truth. Each page turned revealed new horrors, each cryptic symbol a tantalizing clue in the puzzle of my own existence. But with each step closer to the truth, the shadows seemed to grow deeper, the whispers more insistent. I could feel their presence lurking just beyond the edge of perception, watching, waiting, as if daring me to delve deeper into the darkness. Yet I refused to be deterred fueled by a determination born of desperation. For I knew that only by confronting the darkness head-on could I ever hope to find the answers I sought. And so I pressed onward, guided by a flickering beacon of hope that burned bright within me. Along the way, I encountered others who had faced similar trials, their stories a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unspeakable horrors. Together we formed a fragile alliance united in our quest for truth and justice. With each passing day our numbers grew, until we stood as a formidable force against the encroaching darkness. But even as we drew closer to our goal, the shadows seemed to gather strength, their whispers growing louder, more insistent. It was as if they knew that our time was running out, that soon we would uncover the secrets they had fought so hard to keep hidden. And then, in a moment of clarity, it all became clear. The masked figures, the whispered incantations, they were but pawns in a larger game, puppets manipulated by forces beyond our comprehension. 
but even as the truth threatened to consume me, I refused to falter. For I knew that no matter what horrors lay ahead, I would face them with courage and conviction, armed with the knowledge that I was not alone. And so with newfound resolve, I plunged headlong into the abyss, ready to confront whatever darkness awaited me on the other side. For I had learned that true strength lies not in the absence of fear, but in the courage to face it head on, no matter the cost. Story 17 The revelation struck me like a bolt of lightning on a clear summer's day, a stark and unsettling realization that shattered the fragile illusion of reality that I had always taken for granted. It was a seemingly innocuous moment, just a casual glance at my reflection in the bathroom mirror, but what I saw staring back at me sent a chill down my spine. My reflection blinked. I froze my heart skipping a beat as I stared in disbelief at the figure before me. It was subtle, almost imperceptible, but there was no denying the undeniable truth I had not blinked, yet my reflection had. Panic surged through me like a tidal wave, threatening to engulf me in its relentless embrace. I reached out tentatively, as if testing the boundaries of a forbidden truth, but my reflection remained unchanged its eyes locked with mine in a silent mockery of my confusion. And then, as if in response to the silent question that hung in the air, it grinned a wicked, knowing smile that sent shivers down my spine. For a moment I stood there paralyzed by fear and uncertainty, my mind racing with a million unanswered questions. How was this possible? What unseen force was at play? distorting the very fabric of reality itself. And most importantly, what did it want from me? With trembling hands, I reached for the mirror, half expecting to feel the cool glass give way beneath my touch, revealing some hidden passage to a world beyond my understanding. But the surface remained solid and unyielding, trapping me in its silent prison of reflection. As the days passed, the line between reality and illusion blurred, my every move shadowed by the specter of my own reflection. It seemed to take on a life of its own, mocking me with its silent laughter and knowing glances, a constant reminder of the nightmare that had consumed my life. I became a prisoner in my own home, unable to escape the relentless gaze of my doppelganger. Sleep became a fleeting luxury my dreams haunted by visions of twisted mirrors and malevolent shadows lurking in the darkness. And through it all, my reflection watched, its eyes gleaming with a cruel intelligence that chilled me to the bone. But amidst the chaos and confusion, a flicker of defiance ignited within me a determination to uncover the truth, no matter the cost. I pored over books and scrolls, delving into the depths of ancient lore in search of answers that had eluded me thus far. And then, amidst the dusty tomes and faded manuscripts, I found it a forgotten ritual, buried within the annals of time, promising to break the chains that bound me to my reflection. With trembling hands, I gathered the necessary ingredients, each one a testament to the power of ancient magic. As the appointed hour approached, I stood before the mirror, my reflection staring back at me with a mixture of curiosity and disdain. With a steady hand, I began to chant the incantation, the words flowing from my lips like a river of forgotten memories. At first, nothing seemed to happen. The room remained still and silent, the only sound the rhythmic cadence of my own voice. But then, as if in response to the ancient magic that filled the air, my reflection began to change. Its features twisted and contorted, its once familiar face becoming a grotesque parody of humanity. And then, with a final burst of ethereal light, it shattered into a thousand fragments, disappearing into the darkness from whence it came. I stood there, breathless and triumphant, the weight of the world lifted from my shoulders like a burden lifted. But even as I basked in the glow of my newfound freedom, a sense of unease lingered in the air, a reminder of the thin veil that separates reality from illusion. 
For in the end I realized that the true prison was not the mirror itself, but the fear that had consumed me, the fear of the unknown, the fear of the unknown, the fear of the darkness that lurks within us all. And as I stepped away from the shattered remains of the mirror, I vowed to embrace the light that dwells within, to face the shadows that haunt my dreams with courage and resolve. For I am no longer a prisoner in my own reflection, I am a warrior, ready to confront whatever darkness may lie ahead, armed with nothing but the power of my own will, and the knowledge that, in the end, light will always triumph over darkness. As I stepped away from the shattered remains of the mirror, I surveyed the room with a newfound sense of clarity. The air felt lighter, as if a heavy weight had been lifted from my shoulders. But even as I basked in the glow of my newfound freedom, a sense of unease lingered in the air, a reminder of the thin veil that separates reality from illusion. For in the end, I realized that the true prison was not the mirror itself, but the fear that had consumed me, the fear of the unknown, the fear of the darkness that lurks within us all. And as I stepped away from the shattered remains of the mirror, I vowed to embrace the light that dwells within, to face the shadows that haunt my dreams with courage and resolve. For I am no longer a prisoner in my own reflection, I am a warrior, ready to confront whatever darkness may lie ahead, armed with nothing but the power of my own will, and the knowledge that, in the end, light will always triumph over darkness. Story 18 Night after night, the scratching persisted a relentless cacophony that echoed through the stillness of my bedroom like a haunting melody. It began as a faint whisper, barely audible against the backdrop of the night, but with each passing moment it grew louder, more insistent, until it felt as though the very walls themselves were trembling in anticipation. At first I tried to dismiss it as the product of an overactive imagination, a trick of the mind conjured by the shadows that danced in the corners of my vision. But as the night stretched into weeks, and the scratching continued unabated, I could no longer deny the unsettling truth something was trying to claw its way into my sanctuary, something that lurked just beyond the veil of darkness. With trembling hands I reached for the doorknob, a sense of dread coiling in the pit of my stomach like a serpent poised to strike. Every fiber of my being screamed for me to flee, to seek refuge in the safety of the outside world, but a morbid curiosity held me in its grip. As I turned the knob and swung the door open, my heart thundered in my chest like a drumbeat of impending doom. But to my dismay, there was nothing there just an empty hallway shrouded in darkness, the faint glow of moonlight filtering in through the windows casting eerie shadows upon the walls. I stepped cautiously into the hallway, my senses on high alert, every instinct screaming at me to retreat to the safety of my room. But something compelled me forward, a primal urge to confront the source of the scratching that had plagued me for so long. With each step, the darkness seemed to close in around me, suffocating me in its oppressive embrace. And then, just as I reached the end of the hallway, I heard it the scratching, louder and more insistent than ever before, coming from the other side of the door that stood before me. With trembling hands I reached out and grasped the doorknob, my pulse racing with a mixture of fear and anticipation. For a moment I hesitated, the weight of the unknown pressing down upon me like a suffocating blanket. But then, with a deep breath, I pushed the door open, ready to confront whatever lay beyond. But to my horror, there was nothing there, just an empty room, bathed in the pale glow of the moonlight streaming in through the window. The scratching had ceased, replaced by an eerie silence that seemed to reverberate through the very fabric of reality itself. I stood there, rooted to the spot, my mind reeling with confusion and disbelief. Had I imagined the whole thing? Was the scratching merely a figment of my overactive imagination? a manifestation of the fears that lurked within the depths of my subconscious. But deep down, I knew the truth the scratching was real, a tangible presence that had haunted me night after night, driving me to the brink of madness. 
and though I had found no answers in the empty room before me, I knew that the source of the scratching was still out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike. With a heavy heart, I retreated to the safety of my bedroom, the weight of the night pressing down upon me like a heavy shroud. Sleep eluded me, my mind consumed by thoughts of the scratching that had plagued me for so long, and the darkness that lurked just beyond the edges of my reality. As the first light of dawn began to creep through the curtains, I knew that the night's events would haunt me for the rest of my days. For in the silence of the night, amidst the scratching in the shadows, I had glimpsed a truth far darker and more sinister than anything I could have imagined a truth that whispered of horrors beyond comprehension, lurking just beyond the threshold of my reality. And though I may never know the full extent of what lies in wait in the darkness, one thing is certain I will never forget the scratching at my door, and the terror that it unleashed upon my soul. As the first light of dawn began to creep through the curtains, I knew that the night's events would haunt me for the rest of my days. For in the silence of the night, amidst the scratching in the shadows, I had glimpsed a truth far darker and more sinister than anything I could have imagined a truth that whispered of horrors beyond comprehension, lurking just beyond the threshold of my reality. And though I may never know the full extent of what lies in wait in the darkness, one thing is certain I will never forget the scratching at my door and the terror that it unleashed upon my soul. In the days that followed, I became consumed by a relentless obsession and insatiable need to uncover the truth behind the scratching that had plagued me for so long. I scoured every inch of my home, searching for any clue, any shred of evidence that might shed light on the mystery that had consumed my life. But no matter how hard I searched, the answers remained elusive, slipping through my fingers like grains of sand. It was as if the scratching itself had become a phantom, a specter that defied explanation, haunting me with its silent presence. And as the nights wore on, the scratching continued, each sound more chilling than the last, as if mocking my futile attempts to understand its origins. I began to question my own sanity, doubting the reality of the world around me, trapped in a never-ending cycle of fear and uncertainty. But amidst the chaos and confusion, a glimmer of hope flickered in the darkness, a realization that the answers I sought might lie not in the tangible world, but in the recesses of my own mind. With a newfound determination, I delved into the depths of my subconscious, seeking solace in the hidden truths that lurked within. And there, amidst the tangled web of memories and emotions, I found it a fragment of a forgotten dream buried beneath the weight of years gone by. In it, I saw myself standing before the door, bathed in the glow of the moonlight, my hand trembling as I reached out to grasp the doorknob. But as I pushed the door open, there was no empty room waiting for me, just darkness, vast and impenetrable, stretching out into eternity. And in that moment, I realized that the scratching was not some external force, but a manifestation of the fears that lurked within my own heart. With this newfound revelation, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders, as if a burden I had carried for so long had finally been lifted. The scratching no longer held power over me, it was simply a reminder of the depths of my own fears, a specter that could be banished with nothing more than the light of understanding. As I stood before the door once more, bathed in the soft glow of the moonlight, I felt a sense of peace wash over me like a gentle breeze. And though the scratching may continue to echo through the halls of my mind, I know that I am no longer its prisoner, I am free. Story 19 The morning sun filtered through the curtains, casting long shadows across the room as I blinked awake, greeted by a sense of unease that settled like a heavy fog in the pit of my stomach. Rubbing the sleep from my eyes, I sat up in bed my gaze drifting to the empty space beside me where my spouse should have been. Confusion rippled through me as I scanned the room, searching for any sign of my family. But all I found was silence, 
broken only by the faint sound of my own breathing echoing in the stillness of the morning. Throwing back the covers, I swung my legs over the side of the bed and made my way through the house, the floorboards creaking beneath my feet with each hesitant step. As I moved from room to room, a growing sense of dread clawed at the edges of my consciousness, whispering of horrors unseen and truths unspoken. But when I reached the living room, the full extent of the nightmare revealed itself. The room lay in disarray, furniture overturned and belongings strewn about as if caught in the throes of some violent struggle. And yet there was no sign of a struggle, no indication of what could have caused such chaos. Heart pounding in my chest, I called out for my family, my voice echoing off the walls in a desperate plea for reassurance. But there was no response, only the hollow silence of an empty house. Frantic now, I searched every inch of the house, tearing through drawers and closets in a desperate bid to find some clue as to what had happened. But the more I searched, the more elusive the truth became, slipping through my fingers like grains of sand in a desert storm. Hours passed in a blur as I wandered the empty halls, my mind a whirlwind of fear and uncertainty. Where had they gone? What had happened to them? And why was I the only one left behind? Exhausted and defeated, I sank to the floor, tears stinging my eyes as I grappled with the enormity of my loss. My family, my everything, had vanished without a trace, leaving me stranded in a world suddenly devoid of warmth and light. But even as despair threatened to consume me whole, a glimmer of hope flickered in the darkness. For I refused to believe that they were truly gone, that this nightmare was anything more than a cruel trick of fate. And so with newfound determination, I resolved to uncover the truth, no matter the cost. Gathering what little strength remained within me, I set out into the unknown, determined to unravel the mystery of my family's disappearance. Days turned into weeks as I combed through every lead, chased down every rumor, but the truth remained as elusive as ever, a mirage shimmering on the horizon, always just out of reach. But I refused to give up, driven by a stubborn resolve that burned bright within me. For I knew that somewhere, out there in the vast expanse of the world, my family was waiting for me, their absence a silent plea for rescue. And then, just when all hope seemed lost, a breakthrough came in the form of a cryptic message, a single clue hidden in the depths of the internet like a needle in a haystack. With renewed determination, I followed the trail wherever it led, each step bringing me closer to the truth. And finally, after what felt like an eternity of searching, I found myself standing on the threshold of a hidden world, a realm of darkness and deceit where nothing was as it seemed. But I was undeterred, my resolve unshakable as I plunged headlong into the abyss, ready to confront whatever horrors awaited me on the other side. And then, in a moment of clarity, the pieces fell into place. The truth laid bare before me like an open wound. My family had been taken, kidnapped by forces beyond my comprehension, their disappearance part of a larger scheme that reached far beyond the confines of my understanding. But even as the darkness threatened to consume me whole, I refused to surrender to despair. For I knew that as long as there was breath in my body, I would fight tooth and nail to bring them home, to reunite us once more in the light of day. And so, armed with nothing but my determination and the love that burned bright within my heart, I set out into the unknown, ready to face whatever trials lay ahead in my quest to reclaim what was rightfully mine. For in the end, no matter the cost, family was all that mattered, a beacon of hope in the darkest of nights guiding me ever onward towards the promise of a new dawn. With each passing day, the weight of uncertainty bore down on me like a crushing weight, threatening to crush my spirit beneath its relentless pressure. But I refused to be broken, drawing strength from the memories of happier times and the love that bound us together. And so I pressed onward, fueled by a determination that burned brighter than any darkness the world could throw my way. 
for I knew that no matter how long the journey, no matter how daunting the obstacles, I would not rest until my family was safe in my arms once more, reunited at last in the warm embrace of home.
Story 20 The discovery of the journal hidden beneath the floorboards of my house was a revelation that sent shock waves through the very core of my being. It was a cold, rainy afternoon when I stumbled upon it, my fingers brushing against the worn edges of the leather-bound tome as I reached into the darkness below. With a sense of trepidation mingled with curiosity, I pulled the journal free from its hidden confines, the musty scent of age and neglect wafting up to greet me. As I flipped through its pages, my eyes widened in disbelief at the sight that greeted me a chronicle of my own descent into madness, written in a hand that was unmistakably my own. The entries were disjointed, fragmented glimpses into a mind unraveling at the seams a whirlwind of delusions and paranoia, each word a testament to the darkness that lurked within. But as I read on, a sense of unease crept over me like a shadow, for amidst the chaos of the words on the page, there was a truth that I could no longer deny the handwriting was my own. I recoiled in horror, the realization sinking in with a sickening weight that threatened to suffocate me in its relentless embrace. How could this be possible? Had I truly descended into madness without even realizing it, my mind betraying me with each stroke of the pen? But deep down, a nagging voice whispered that there was more to this than met the eye that the journal held secrets far darker and more sinister than I could have ever imagined. With trembling hands, I turned back to the first entry, determined to uncover the truth that lay hidden within its pages. The first entry was dated several months ago, a time when my life had seemed so ordinary, so mundane. But as I read on, a chill ran down my spine, for the words on the page painted a picture of a world turned upside down, a world where reality and illusion blurred into one, where the line between sanity and madness grew ever thinner. I read of strange occurrences a scratching at the door in the dead of night, whispers in the darkness that seemed to echo through the very walls of my home. I read of sleepless nights spent haunted by visions of twisted mirrors and malevolent shadows lurking in the corners of my mind. But amidst the chaos, there was a thread of lucidity, a desperate plea for help, a cry for salvation from a mind teetering on the brink of oblivion. And as I read on, I realized that the journal was not just a chronicle of my descent into madness but a beacon of hope in the darkness a testament to the strength of the human spirit in the face of overwhelming adversity. With each entry, I felt a sense of kinship with the author, a recognition of the struggles that we shared, the demons that we battled. And though the words on the page filled me with a sense of dread, they also filled me with a newfound resolve a determination to confront the darkness that lurked within and emerged stronger on the other side. But as I reached the final entry, a sense of foreboding washed over me like a tidal wave, threatening to pull me under its relentless tide. For in those final words, I saw a reflection of my own fears, my own doubts a mirror held up to the darkness that dwelled within. And as I closed the journal and returned it to its hiding place beneath the floorboards, I knew that the journey was far from over that the darkness would continue to haunt me, lurking just beyond the edges of my reality, waiting to ensnare me in its suffocating embrace. But amidst the chaos and confusion, there was a glimmer of hope, a whisper of light in the darkness, guiding me forward on a path of self-discovery and redemption. For though the journey ahead may be fraught with peril, I know that I am not alone, that the strength of my own spirit will carry me through the darkest of nights and lead me to the dawn of a new day. Story 21 The sting of pain jolted me awake, a searing sensation radiating from my chest as if a hot poker had been pressed against my skin. With a gasp, I sat upright, my heart pounding in my chest as I frantically scanned the dimly lit room 
trying to make sense of the nightmare unfolding around me. My eyes fell upon the flickering candles arranged in a circle around the bed, their dancing flames casting eerie shadows against the walls. But it was the sight of the symbol carved into my flesh that sent a shiver down my spine, a twisted design etched into my chest with surgical precision, its meaning shrouded in mystery. Panic surged through me as I reached a trembling hand to touch the mark, feeling the rough edges of the wound beneath my fingertips, but as I tried to scream, to call out for help, I realized with a sinking dread that my voice had been stolen from me, leaving me trapped in a silent prison of terror. Desperate to escape, I struggled against the invisible bonds that held me captive, but they refused to yield tightening their grip with each futile attempt. And as the candles burned low, casting long shadows that seemed to dance with malevolent intent, I knew that I was not alone in the darkness. Whispers echoed in the silence, a chorus of unseen voices speaking in hushed tones that sent a chill down my spine. I strained to make out their words, but they were like a foreign language, incomprehensible and yet somehow familiar, as if echoing from the depths of a half-remembered dream. Fear clutched at my heart as I realized that I was caught in the grip of something far beyond my understanding, a force that defied explanation and threatened to consume me whole. But even as despair threatened to overwhelm me, a glimmer of defiance flickered within me, a stubborn refusal to surrender to the darkness that sought to claim me. With trembling hands, I reached for the nearest candle, its flame dancing in the still air like a beacon of hope amidst the encroaching shadows. And as I held it aloft, its warm light pushing back the darkness, I felt a surge of courage welling up from deep within me, a determination to face whatever horrors awaited me in the night. Gathering my strength, I rose to my feet the flames of the candles casting long shadows that seemed to stretch and contort with each step I took. But I refused to be deterred, pressing onward through the oppressive darkness with a single-minded focus that bordered on madness. As I moved through the labyrinthine corridors of the house, I felt as if I were being watched, the unseen eyes of some malevolent presence following my every move. But I refused to look back. My gaze fixed firmly ahead as I searched for any sign of a way out, any glimmer of hope in the suffocating gloom. And then, just when it seemed that all was lost, I stumbled upon a hidden doorway concealed behind a tapestry, its ancient wood groaning in protest as I pushed it open. Beyond lay a chamber bathed in an ethereal glow its walls adorned with strange symbols and arcane sigils that pulsed with otherworldly energy. Heart pounding in my chest, I stepped into the chamber, the air thick with the scent of incense and something darker, something primal that stirred deep within my soul. And as I approached the center of the room, I saw it a pedestal bathed in a pool of soft light upon which rested a gleaming dagger adorned with strange runes. With a sense of dread mingled with determination, I reached out and grasped the dagger, its hilt cool against my skin as I felt its power coursing through me. And then, with a single swift motion, I brought the blade down upon the symbol carved into my chest, cutting through flesh and bone with a sickening squelch. As blood pooled around me, I felt a surge of liberation wash over me, the invisible bonds that had held me captive shattering like brittle glass. And as I looked up I saw them my family, their faces bathed in the soft glow of the candles, their eyes brimming with tears of relief as they rushed to embrace me. In that moment, surrounded by the warmth of their love, I knew that I had triumphed over the darkness that had threatened to consume me. And though the scars of that night would linger long after the candles had burned low, 
I also knew that I would never again be afraid to face the shadows that lurked in the depths of my own soul. Story 22 The nightly ritual of footsteps and whispers had become a haunting melody, a symphony of fear that played out against the backdrop of the moonlit night. It began as a faint murmur, barely audible above the rustle of leaves and the distant hum of the city, but with each passing moment, it grew louder, more insistent, until it felt as though the very air itself was alive with the echoes of unseen footsteps and whispered secrets. At first, I tried to dismiss it as a trick of the wind, a figment of my overactive imagination conjured by the shadows that danced in the corners of my vision. But as the night stretched into weeks, and the footsteps continued unabated, I could no longer deny the unsettling truth something was pacing back and forth outside my window, something that lurked just beyond the veil of darkness. With trembling hands I reached for the curtains, heart pounding in my chest like a drumbeat of impending doom. Every fiber of my being screamed for me to flee, to seek refuge in the safety of the outside world but a morbid curiosity held me in its grip. As I pulled back the curtains and peered outside, my breath caught in my throat at the sight that greeted me. There, bathed in the soft glow of the moonlight, was nothing but an empty street, the silence broken only by the faint rustle of leaves in the wind. I blinked in disbelief, my mind struggling to comprehend the inexplicable. How could there be footsteps without a trace of the one who made them? How could there be whispers without a mouth to speak them? It defied all logic, all reason, leaving me adrift in a sea of uncertainty and fear. Night after night, the footsteps persisted, each night louder and more menacing than the last, and with each passing night the whispers grew more sinister speaking of ancient curses and forbidden rituals, of things that should never have been unleashed upon the world. I became a prisoner in my own home, consumed by a relentless paranoia that threatened to consume me whole. Sleep became a distant memory, replaced by the endless torment of footsteps and whispers that echoed through the halls of my mind. But amidst the chaos and confusion, a flicker of defiance ignited within me a determination to uncover the truth, no matter the cost. I scoured every inch of my home, searching for any clue, any shred of evidence that might shed light on the mystery that had consumed my life. But no matter how hard I searched, the answers remained elusive, slipping through my fingers like grains of sand. It was as if the footsteps and whispers were nothing more than phantoms ephemeral shadows that defied all attempts at understanding. And then, one fateful night, as I lay awake in bed, the footsteps grew louder, more frantic, as if driven by some unseen force. The whispers swirled around me like a vortex, their words unintelligible yet filled with a malevolent intent. With a sense of dread coursing through my veins, I forced myself to my feet and stumbled towards the window, determined to confront whatever darkness lay beyond. And as I peered outside, my blood ran cold at the sight that greeted me. There, bathed in the pale moonlight, stood a figure a shadowy silhouette with eyes that glowed like twin orbs of fire. Its features were twisted and contorted a grotesque parody of humanity, and as it stared back at me with a malevolent gaze, I felt a chill run down my spine. For a moment we stood locked in a silent standoff, the weight of the night pressing down upon us like a heavy shroud, and then, with a sudden burst of ethereal light, the figure vanished into the darkness, leaving behind nothing but an empty street and the echoes of its haunting laughter. I stumbled backwards, heart pounding in my chest as I struggled to make sense of the surreal sight before me. Had I truly seen a creature of darkness, or was it merely a trick of the mind, 
a manifestation of my own fears and insecurities. But deep down I knew the truth the footsteps and whispers that had plagued me for so long were not mere figments of my imagination. They were the harbingers of something far darker and more sinister a force that lurked just beyond the edges of my reality, waiting to ensnare me in its suffocating embrace. With a newfound resolve, I vowed to confront the darkness head-on, to uncover the truth that lay hidden within its depths. For though the journey ahead may be fraught with peril, I know that I am not alone that the strength of my own spirit will guide me through the darkest of nights and lead me to the dawn of a new day. As I stood there, trembling in the wake of the eerie encounter, a sense of determination surged within me like a flickering flame in the darkness. I knew that I couldn't continue to live in fear, trapped within the confines of my own home, haunted by unseen terrors. Armed with newfound resolve, I embarked on a quest for answers, delving into the depths of ancient texts and forgotten lore in search of any clue that might shed light on the mysterious presence that had plagued me for so long. But with each passing day, the mystery only deepened, the whispers of the past echoing through the corridors of time, revealing fragments of a history shrouded in darkness. And as I unraveled the threads of the past, I came to realize that the footsteps and whispers were not merely random occurrences, they were manifestations of a curse that had plagued my family for generations, a curse born of ancient rituals and forbidden knowledge. With this revelation, a sense of dread washed over me like a tidal wave, threatening to pull me under its relentless tide. For I knew that the curse could not be broken easily, that it would take more than mere determination to overcome the darkness that lurked within. But amidst the chaos and confusion, there was a glimmer of hope, a whisper of light in the darkness guiding me forward on a path of redemption and salvation. And though the journey ahead may be fraught with peril, I know that I am not alone that the strength of my own spirit will carry me through the darkest of nights and lead me to the dawn of a new day. Story 23 the photograph lay nestled among a stack of old books in the attic, its faded edges curling with age, as if trying to escape the confines of its frame. I stumbled upon it by chance, drawn to the dusty corner of the room by a sense of curiosity that seemed to whisper my name. As I picked up the photograph, a chill raced down my spine sending shivers cascading across my skin like a wave crashing against the shore. For there, staring back at me from the yellowed paper, was a figure I knew all too well myself, or so it seemed, standing in front of the very house I now called home. But as I studied the image closer, a sense of unease settled over me like a heavy shroud, for the figure in the photograph seemed to be watching me, its eyes filled with a malice that sent a shiver down my spine. I blinked, convinced it was a trick of the light, a figment of my imagination brought on by the dimness of the attic and the weight of the past pressing down upon me. But when I looked again, the figure remained, its gaze fixed upon me with an intensity that made my blood run cold heart pounding in my chest, I tore my eyes away from the photograph, the sense of dread gnawing at the edges of my consciousness like a hungry beast. But try as I might, I could not shake the feeling that I was being watched, that the figure in the image held some sinister power over me. Determined to unravel the mystery, I set out to learn more about the photograph scouring old family albums and dusty archives in search of clues that might shed light on its origins. But the more I searched, the deeper the mystery seemed to grow, the answers slipping through my fingers like sand in the wind. And then, just when I was ready to give up hope, 
a breakthrough came in the form of an old newspaper article, buried deep within the archives of the local library. It spoke of a family that had once lived in the house, a family torn apart by tragedy and loss, their names lost to the passage of time. But as I read on, a sense of recognition washed over me, a feeling that I had stumbled upon something far more sinister than mere coincidence. For in the grainy black and white photograph accompanying the article, I saw at the figure from the photograph in the attic, its eyes filled with the same malevolence that had haunted my dreams. With trembling hands, I delved deeper into the archives, scouring old records and faded photographs in search of answers, and as I pieced together the fragments of the past, a chilling truth began to emerge, one that sent shivers down my spine and turned my blood to ice. It seemed that the family who had once lived in the house had been plagued by a series of inexplicable tragedies, each more horrifying than the last. And at the center of it all was a figure shrouded in darkness, a shadowy presence that seemed to linger at the edges of every photograph, its eyes filled with a hunger that could not be quenched. But as I delved deeper into the mystery, I realized that the figure was not merely a bystander, but a malevolent force hell-bent on wreaking havoc upon the world of the living. And somehow through some twisted quirk of fate, it had set its sights upon me, determined to drag me down into the depths of its own twisted reality. Terrified and alone, I knew that I had to confront the darkness head-on, to banish the shadowy figure from my life once and for all. And so armed with nothing but my own courage and determination, I returned to the attic, the photograph clutched tightly in my trembling hands. As I stood before the image, its eyes boring into mine with a hunger that seemed to consume me from within, I felt a surge of defiance welling up from deep within me. For I knew that no matter how powerful the darkness may be, it could never extinguish the light of hope that burned bright within my soul. With a steady hand, I reached for a nearby candle, its flame flickering in the still air like a beacon of hope amidst the encroaching shadows. And as I held it aloft, its warm light pushing back the darkness, I felt a surge of strength coursing through me, a determination to face whatever horrors awaited me in the night. With a single swift motion, I brought the flame to the photograph, watching as the edges caught fire and the image began to curl and blacken with smoke. And as the flames consumed the paper, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders, a sense of liberation washing over me like a wave crashing against the shore. In that moment, I knew that I had triumphed over the darkness that had sought to claim me, that I had emerged from the depths of despair stronger and more resilient than ever before. And though the scars of the past would linger long after the flames had died down, I also knew that I would never again be afraid to confront the shadows that lurked in the depths of my own soul. Story 24 The night had been restless, filled with fitful dreams that danced on the edge of my consciousness like shadows in the moonlight. When I finally emerged from the depths of slumber, I was greeted by a sight that sent a chill down my spine my body covered in bruises and scratches, as if I had been dragged across the floor while I slept. Panic surged through me like a tidal wave, threatening to drown me in its suffocating embrace. How had this happened? What unseen force had laid claim to my sleeping form, leaving behind a trail of evidence that spoke of horrors beyond comprehension? As I struggled to piece together the events of the night before, a sense of overwhelming dread washed over me like a torrential rain, clouding my thoughts and obscuring the memories that lurked just beyond the edges of my consciousness. Try as I might, I could recall nothing just fragments of dreams that flitted through my mind like phantoms in the darkness. 
With trembling hands, I of the fears and insecurities that lurked within. With a heavy heart, I resolved to confront the darkness head on, to embrace the shadows that haunted my dreams with courage and resolve. For though the journey ahead may be fraught with peril, I know that I am not alone, that the strength of my own spirit will guide me through the darkest of nights and lead me to the dawn of a new day. As I delve deeper into the recesses of my mind, I uncovered memories that had long been buried beneath layers of denial and repression. Visions of past traumas and fears that I had sought to forget flooded my consciousness, each one a piece of the puzzle that had eluded me for so long. But amidst the darkness, there was also light a glimmer of hope that shone like a beacon in the night. For with each memory unearthed, I found a newfound strength within myself, a resilience that had been forged in the fires of adversity. Armed with this newfound understanding, I vowed to confront the darkness head on, to embrace the shadows that lurked within with courage and resolve. For though the journey ahead may be fraught with peril, I know that I am not alone that the strength of my own spirit will guide me through the darkest of nights and lead me to the dawn of a new day. Story 25 The forest behind my house had always held a certain allure, its ancient trees whispering secrets to those who dared to listen. But on this particular night, as the moon hung low in the sky and the shadows danced among the branches, it seemed to beckon to me with an urgency I could not ignore. I stood at the edge of the forest, the hairs on the back of my neck prickling, with a sense of foreboding, as I listened to the soft rustle of leaves in the breeze. And then, amidst the gentle symphony of the night, I heard at the sound of my own voice, calling out to me from the depths of the forest. At first I thought it was a trick of the wind, a mere echo bouncing off the trees and distorting reality. But as I listened closer I realized that the voice was real, tangible, its cadence unmistakable and its familiarity. Heart pounding in my chest I stepped into the darkness, the soft earth yielding beneath my feet as I ventured deeper into the embrace of the forest. With each step, the voice grew louder, its tone filled with a sense of urgency that sent a shiver down my spine. I called out into the night, my voice joining the chorus of whispers that seemed to emanate from the very heart of the forest. But there was no response, only the haunting echo of my own words bouncing off the trees in the stillness of the night. Driven by a sense of curiosity mingled with fear, I pressed onward. My senses heightened as I navigated the winding paths that crisscrossed the forest floor. The air was thick with the scent of pine and earth, the darkness pressing in around me like a suffocating blanket. And then, just when it seemed that I could go no further, I stumbled upon a clearing bathed in moonlight, its center illuminated by a soft, ethereal glow. And there, standing at the edge of the clearing, was a figure shrouded in shadow, its features obscured by the darkness that surrounded it. Heart pounding in my chest, I called out to the figure, my voice trembling with a mixture of fear and anticipation. And to my surprise it answered, its voice a mere whisper in the stillness of the night. As I approached, the figure stepped forward into the light, revealing itself to be a reflection of my own likeness, its eyes filled with a sadness that seemed to mirror my own. And as I stared into those familiar eyes, I felt a sense of recognition wash over me, a feeling that I had encountered this figure before, in some distant dream or half-forgotten memory. But before I could speak, the figure held up a hand, its fingers curling into a beckoning gesture that sent a shiver down my spine. And then, with a voice that seemed to echo from the depths of the forest itself, it spoke. Come, it said, 
its words a whisper on the wind. Come with me, and together we shall uncover the secrets that lie hidden in the darkness. Unable to resist the pull of the figure's words, I stepped forward, my heart pounding in my chest as I followed it deeper into the heart of the forest. And with each step, the voice grew louder, its words weaving a tapestry of mystery and intrigue that seemed to draw me ever closer to the truth. As we ventured deeper into the darkness, the trees seemed to close in around us, their twisted branches reaching out like skeletal fingers to ensnare us in their grasp. But still we pressed onward, driven by a curiosity that bordered on obsession, until at last we reached the heart of the forest, a place where reality seemed to blur and shift with each passing moment. And there, amidst the tangled undergrowth and gnarled roots, we found it a hidden glade bathed in the soft glow of moonlight, its center occupied by a single, ancient tree whose branches reached up to the heavens like fingers grasping for the stars. As I stood before the tree, a sense of awe washed over me, a feeling of reverence for the power that seemed to pulse within its very essence. And then, with a voice that seemed to resonate from the depths of the earth itself, the figure spoke once more. This tree, it said, its words a mere whisper on the wind, is the key to unlocking the secrets of the forest, the gateway to a world beyond our wildest imaginings. And with that, the figure reached out and placed a hand upon the trunk of the tree, its bark rough against my skin as I felt a surge of energy coursing through me. And as I closed my eyes and surrendered myself to the power of the forest, I knew that I had finally found my true purpose, my destiny entwined with the ancient magic that had called me here. Story 26 the discovery of the locked door in my basement was a revelation that sent shock waves through the very foundation of my reality. It was a typical Saturday afternoon when I stumbled upon it, my curiosity piqued by a sense of unease that had lingered in the air for weeks. I had always considered myself familiar with every nook and cranny of my home, but as I descended into the depths of the basement that day, I realized that there were secrets hidden within its walls, secrets that had long been forgotten, waiting to be unearthed. The door stood at the far end of the basement, nestled in the shadows like a forgotten relic of a bygone era. It was old and weathered, its surface marred by the passage of time, yet there was an air of mystery that clung to it like a shroud. With trembling hands, I reached for the doorknob. A sense of trepidation mingled with excitement coursing through my veins, but as I turned the knob and pushed against the door, it refused to budge, as if locked in place by some unseen force. Frustration welled up within me, mingled with a growing sense of unease. What secrets lay beyond this door, and why had it remained hidden for so long, concealed from prying eyes by some unseen hand? As I pondered these questions, a sound pierced the silence of faint scratching coming from the other side of the door, like the desperate plea of a trapped animal seeking release. My blood ran cold at the sound, sending shivers down my spine as a sense of foreboding washed over me like a tidal wave. For a moment I hesitated, the weight of uncertainty pressing down upon me like a heavy shroud, but then, Driven by a primal instinct to uncover the truth, I reached for the door once more, determined to see what lay beyond. With a final burst of effort, the door gave way, swinging open on rusty hinges to reveal a darkness so thick it seemed to swallow the very light around it. I hesitated on the threshold, peering into the abyss with a mixture of fear and anticipation. And then, as if guided by some unseen hand, I stepped forward into the darkness, the sound of my own heartbeat echoing in the silence. The air was thick with dust and the musty scent of age, sending a shiver down my spine as I ventured further into the unknown. 
As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I saw that I was standing in a small chamber, illuminated only by the faint glow of a single flickering candle. The walls were lined with shelves filled with ancient tomes and artifacts, their surfaces covered in layers of dust and cobwebs. But it was what lay at the center of the room that caught my attention, a small wooden crate, its surface marked with strange symbols and sigils. With trembling hands, I approached the crate, a sense of trepidation mingled with curiosity coursing through my veins. As I reached out to touch the lid, the scratching sound returned, louder and more insistent than before. My heart raced in my chest as I hesitated, uncertain of what I would find within. With a deep breath, I lifted the lid of the crate, revealing a sight that sent a chill down my spine a creature, small and frail, curled up within the confines of its wooden prison. Its eyes glowed with a faint light, reflecting the flickering flame of the candle above. For a moment we stood locked in a silent standoff, the creature and I, each one wary of the other's presence, and then with a sudden burst of movement, the creature sprang to life, its movements quick and agile as it darted out of the crate and into the darkness beyond. I stumbled backwards, heart pounding in my chest as I watched the creature disappear into the shadows. What was it? Where had it come from? And most importantly, what did it want from me? As I stood there, grappling with these questions, a voice echoed in the darkness a whisper, barely audible yet filled with a sense of urgency. Help me, it hissed, the words sending a shiver down my spine. Please help me. With a sense of determination coursing through my veins, I set out into the darkness, determined to uncover the truth behind the creature's plight. For though the journey ahead may be fraught with peril, I know that I am not alone, that the strength of my own spirit will guide me through the darkest of nights and lead me to the dawn of a new day.
Story 27 As I blinked away the remnants of sleep, my gaze instinctively drifted upward to the ceiling, only to be met with a sight that sent a jolt of cold dread coursing through my veins. Words, hundreds of them, covered every inch of the ceiling, scrawled in a language that seemed both alien and familiar, as if plucked from the darkest recesses of my own mind. I sat up in bed, heart pounding in my chest, as I tried to make sense of the twisted letters and jagged symbols that danced before my eyes. But the more I stared, the more elusive the meaning became, the words shifting and morphing like smoke in the wind. With trembling hands, I reached out to touch the writing, feeling the cool surface of the ceiling beneath my fingertips. And then, as if by some unseen force, the words began to change, their meaning becoming clear to me in a sudden, horrifying flash of insight. There were my thoughts, my innermost fears and desires laid bare for all to see, twisted and corrupted by some malevolent force that sought to consume me whole. And as I read the words, a sense of unease settled over me like a heavy shroud, filling the room with a palpable sense of dread. Desperate to escape the suffocating grip of the words, I tore my gaze away from the ceiling, my heart racing as I tried to calm the storm of emotions raging within me. But no matter how hard I tried to push them away, the words lingered in the air like a sinister whisper, taunting me with their insidious presence. With a sense of determination born of desperation, I resolved to decipher the message, to unravel the twisted labyrinth of my own thoughts and fears. But as I studied the words, I realized that they were more than just random scribblings on the ceiling. They were a reflection of the darkest corners of my soul, a mirror held up to the depths of my own psyche. And as I delved deeper into the twisted tapestry of my thoughts, I felt a chill run down my spine, for I knew that the words held a power beyond my comprehension, a power that threatened to consume me from within. But still I pressed on, driven by a need to understand, to unlock the secrets hidden within the tangled web of my own mind. And as I did, the words began to shift and change, their meaning becoming clearer with each passing moment. They spoke of fears long buried, of doubts and insecurities that had plagued me for as long as I could remember. They whispered of desires unfulfilled, of dreams left unrealized in the harsh light of day, and they taunted me with visions of a future dark and uncertain, a future shaped by the choices I had yet to make. As I read on, I felt a sense of despair welling up from deep within me, threatening to engulf me in its suffocating embrace, but even as the darkness closed in around me, I refused to surrender to its grasp clinging to a flicker of hope that burned bright within my soul. With renewed determination, I reached out to the words, tracing their jagged edges with trembling fingers as I sought to unravel the mystery of their meaning. And then, in a moment of clarity, it all became clear the words were not my own, but those of a twisted reflection, a shadow self born from the depths of my own subconscious. And as I realized the truth, a sense of liberation washed over me, freeing me from the suffocating weight of my own thoughts and fears. For I knew that no matter how dark the path ahead may be, I would face it head on, armed with the knowledge that the power to shape my own destiny lay within me. With a newfound sense of purpose, I rose from until it felt as though the very air itself was alive with the echoes of unseen whispers and ghostly caresses. As I drifted into the embrace of slumber each night, I could feel it a cold hand brushing against my cheek, sending shivers down my spine. The touch was light, almost ephemeral, yet there was a weight to it a sense of presence that lingered long after the sensation had faded. 
Accompanying the touch were whispers soft, barely audible murmurs that spoke of promises unkept and debts unpaid. They were words spoken in hushed tones, their meaning obscured by the veil of darkness that surrounded me, yet their intent was clear a reminder of the sins of the past, the mistakes that had come back to haunt me in the dead of night. But when I woke up, there was no one there, just an empty room bathed in the soft glow of the moonlight, the echoes of the whispers still lingering in the air like a haunting melody. At first I tried to dismiss it as a trick of the mind, a figment of my overactive imagination conjured by the shadows that danced in the corners of my vision. But as the night stretched into weeks, and the whispers continued unabated, I could no longer deny the unsettling truth something was reaching out to me from beyond the veil of darkness, something that sought to draw me into its sinister embrace. With each passing night, the whispers grew louder, more insistent, until they seemed to reverberate through the very fabric of reality itself. They spoke of secrets long buried, of sins left unpunished, and with each word I felt a chill run down my spine, a sense of dread that threatened to consume me whole. I became a prisoner in my own home, consumed by a relentless paranoia that gnawed at the edges of my sanity. Sleep became a distant memory, replaced by the endless torment of whispers and ghostly caresses that haunted my dreams. But amidst the chaos and confusion, there was a glimmer of hope, a whisper of light in the darkness, guiding me forward on a path of redemption and salvation. And though the journey ahead may be fraught with peril, I know that I am not alone, that the strength of my own spirit will guide me through the darkest of nights and lead me to the dawn of a new day. With a newfound resolve, I set out to uncover the truth behind the whispers that had plagued me for so long delving into the depths of ancient lore and forgotten rituals in search of answers that had eluded me thus far. But the path was fraught with danger, each step a struggle against the forces that sought to drag me down into the abyss. Shadows danced on the edge of my vision, whispering secrets that sent shivers down my spine, yet I pressed on, driven by a determination to confront the darkness that lurked within. As I delved deeper into the mysteries of the night, I uncovered truths that sent shock waves through the very core of my being. The whispers spoke of a pact made in blood, of promises broken and souls bound to darkness, and with each revelation I felt a sense of horror wash over me like a tidal wave. But amidst the darkness, there was also light a glimmer of hope that shone like a beacon in the night. For I realized that the whispers were not just a curse, but a warning, a reminder of the consequences of my actions and the power of redemption that lay within my grasp. Armed with this newfound understanding, I vowed to confront the darkness head on, to embrace the whispers that haunted my dreams with courage and resolve. For though the journey ahead may be fraught with peril, I know that I am not alone, that the strength of my own spirit will guide me through the darkest of nights and lead me to the dawn of a new day. Story 29 The discovery of the photograph album hidden in the attic seemed innocuous at first, a relic from a bygone era filled with memories of happier times. But as I flipped through the pages, Tracing the faded edges of each photograph with trembling fingers, I realized that there was something deeply unsettling about the images that stared back at me. At first glance, they appeared to be ordinary family portraits, snapshots frozen in time of my loved ones smiling and laughing, their faces aglow with the warmth of shared moments captured for eternity. But as I studied the photographs closer, a sense of unease settled over me like a heavy shroud, for I realized that the faces were changing, their expressions twisting into grimaces of agony 
as if caught in the throes of some unspeakable horror. With growing dread, I turned the pages of the album, each new image more disturbing than the last as I watched the faces of my family members contort and warp before my very eyes. Their smiles turned into snarls of pain, their eyes darkening with despair, as if haunted by some unseen specter that lurked just beyond the edges of the frame. I tried to rationalize what I was seeing, to convince myself that it was merely a trick of the light or a figment of my overactive imagination, but deep down, I knew that there was something far more sinister at play, something that defied explanation and sent a chill down my spine. As I reached the final pages of the album, my heart sank like a stone in my chest for there, amidst the twisted visages of my family members, was a photograph unlike any other. It depicted a scene of unspeakable horror, a tableau of suffering and torment that seemed to pulsate with a malevolent energy all its own. In the center of the image stood a figure, shrouded in darkness its features obscured by the shadows that danced around it like specters in the night. And as I stared into its empty eyes, I felt a cold dread settle over me, for I knew that this was no ordinary photograph, it was a window into a world of darkness and despair, a world that I had unwittingly stumbled upon. With trembling hands, I closed the album, the weight of its revelations pressing down upon me like a suffocating blanket. And as I sat there in the dim light of the attic, surrounded by memories twisted and corrupted by some unseen force, I realized that I was not alone. For in the silence of the room, I heard it the faint sound of whispers, the echo of voices long silenced by the passage of time. And as the darkness closed in around me, I knew that I had to confront the truth to unravel the mystery of the photograph album and the twisted fate that had befallen my family. Driven by a sense of determination born of desperation, I set out to uncover the secrets hidden within the photographs, to untangle the threads of darkness that bound my loved ones to a fate worse than death. And as I delved deeper into the mystery, I found myself drawn into a world of darkness and despair a world where the lines between reality and nightmare blurred with each passing moment. But still I pressed on, driven by a stubborn refusal to surrender to the darkness that threatened to consume me whole. With each new revelation I felt a sense of clarity wash over me, a glimmer of hope amidst the encroaching shadows that surrounded me. And then, just when it seemed that all hope was lost, I stumbled upon a clue hidden in the depths of the attic, a single photograph tucked away in the corner of a dusty old trunk. It depicted a scene from my childhood, a moment of innocence captured in time, before the darkness had descended upon our family. As I studied the image, a sense of recognition washed over me for I realized that the figure in the photograph album was none other than myself, a twisted reflection of the person I once was. And with that realization came a surge of determination, a resolve to confront the darkness that had taken root within me and reclaim my family from its clutches. Armed with newfound purpose, I set out into the night guided by the flickering light of the moon and the whispers of the past that echoed in my ears. And as I ventured forth into the unknown, I knew that whatever trials lay ahead, I would face them with courage and conviction, ready to confront the darkness that lurked within and emerge stronger on the other side. Story 30 The sensation of cold wind whipped against my skin, and the acrid scent of salt water stung my nostrils. Confusion clouded my mind as I struggled to make sense of my surroundings. How had I come to be standing on the edge of a cliff, with nothing but the yawning abyss below? Panic surged through me like a tidal wave as I realized the precariousness of my situation. The ground beneath my feet felt unsteady, 
crumbling away with each passing moment, threatening to send me plummeting into the depths below. Desperate to escape the nightmare that held me in its grip, I tried to step back, to retreat from the edge of the cliff and find solid ground. But to my horror, I found that I couldn't move not an inch. It was as if invisible shackles held me in place, trapping me in a waking nightmare from which I couldn't wake up. Fear clawed at my chest, threatening to suffocate me in its relentless embrace. The abyss below seemed to call out to me, a siren song luring me closer to the edge with each passing moment. But deep down, I knew that to surrender to the darkness would mean certain death. With every fiber of my being, I fought against the paralysis that held me in its grip, straining against the invisible chains that bound me to the edge of the cliff. But the more I struggled, the tighter they seemed to become, squeezing the very life from my limbs. As I teetered on the brink of oblivion, a voice echoed in the recesses of my mind a whisper, barely audible yet filled with a sense of urgency. Let go it hissed, the words sending a shiver down my spine. Surrender to the darkness, and all will be forgiven. But I knew better than to heed the voice of temptation. I knew that to give in to the darkness would mean surrendering my very soul, consigning myself to an eternity of torment and despair. With a newfound sense of resolve, I pushed against the paralysis that held me in place, willing my limbs to move despite the overwhelming odds. Inch by agonizing inch, I began to retreat from the edge of the cliff, fighting against the pull of the abyss with every ounce of strength I possessed. And then, just as it seemed that all hope was lost, I felt the invisible shackles loosen their grip, releasing me from their suffocating embrace. With a final burst of effort, I stumbled backwards, collapsing onto solid ground with a sense of relief that bordered on euphoria. As I lay there, gasping for breath, I realized that I had narrowly escaped the clutches of the darkness that had threatened to consume me. But the nightmare was far from over, for I knew that the forces that had sought to drag me into the abyss would not rest until they had claimed me as their own. With a heavy heart, I rose to my feet, steeling myself for the trials that lay ahead. For though the journey ahead may be fraught with peril, I know that I am not alone that the strength of my own spirit will guide me through the darkest of nights and lead me to the dawn of a new day. As I stood there shaken but determined, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. The cliffs loomed ominously behind me, their jagged edges casting long shadows that seemed to stretch out towards me like fingers of darkness. But it wasn't just the cliffs that unsettled me, it was the sense of something lurking just beyond the edges of my perception, something dark and malevolent that hungered for my soul. With a sense of trepidation, I scanned the horizon, searching for any sign of the presence that I could feel closing in around me. But the landscape was empty, devoid of any visible threat. And yet, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being hunted that the darkness that had tried to claim me at the edge of the cliff was still lurking in the shadows, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. With each passing moment, the sense of unease grew stronger, until it felt as though the very air around me was charged with a palpable sense of dread. I knew that I had to keep moving, to find a way to escape the darkness that threatened to consume me. With renewed determination, I set out into the wilderness, each step a testament to the strength of my will. And though the journey ahead would be fraught with danger, I knew that I could not falter not when the darkness was so close at hand. As I ventured deeper into the unknown, the landscape seemed to shift and warp around me, twisting into grotesque shapes that seemed to mock my efforts to escape. But still I pressed on, 
driven by a relentless determination to find a way out of the nightmare that held me in its grip. And then, just when it seemed that all hope was lost, I stumbled upon a narrow path leading away from the cliffs, a faint glimmer of light shining in the distance. With a sense of relief washing over me, I quickened my pace, each step bringing me closer to freedom. But as I walked, I couldn't shake the feeling that the darkness was still watching, still waiting for the perfect moment to strike. And though I knew that the road ahead would be long and perilous, I vowed to face whatever dangers lay in wait with courage and resolve. For though the night may be dark and full of terrors, I know that the light of dawn will eventually break through the darkness, leading me to safety and salvation. And with that thought to guide me, I set out into the unknown, ready to face whatever trials may come my way, 